Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. Ors Farm Market. Visit us at Ors Farm Market, just five miles west of Martinsburg, to pick up all your local fresh fruits and vegetables. With our in-house bakery, fresh fruit slushies, and apple cider donuts, you can't go wrong. Live bluegrass every Saturday from 12 to 5 p.m. And check out all that's local and delicious at Ors by going to orsfarmarket.com or visit our Facebook page. Happiness grows here. Farm Market. Hello, this is Mark Sutton of the Sutton & Janelle Law Firm. The right attorney can make all the difference in your case. That's why you should call Sutton & Janelle. We have been serving clients in West Virginia and Maryland since 1999 in the areas of family law, DUI, criminal defense, and personal injury. Sutton & Janelle works hard to obtain a favorable outcome for you at a reasonable rate with affordable payment options. Sutton & Janelle values your rights and is passionate about your success. Contact us today at suttonandjanelle.com. This is Eric at Hagerstown Ford. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hagerstown Ford, it is that convenient. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a newer used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hagerstown Ford will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it, no questions asked. Why waste your time at a car dealership playing the dumb back and forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want and get your new ride delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. Bring them out, bring them out, hey. The following sports bring special out, is a broadcast out. presentation bring of Talk out, Radio hey. WRNR Martinsburg. Dear Lord, the battle we go through life. Dear Lord, the battle we go through life. We ask for chances fair. We ask for chances fair. Chance equal our strike. Chance equal our strike. Chance to do it there. Chance to do it there. We should win. We should win. Let it be by the code. Let it be by the code. Faith and honor hell high. Faith and honor hell high. We should lose. We should lose. Stand by the road. Stand by the road. Cheers when it's go by. Cheers when it's go by. Day by day. Day by day. We get better and better. We get better and better. We can't be beat. We can't be beat. Boom. Beat. Beat. It's time for the excitement of West Virginia high school football featuring the AAA Martinsburg Bulldogs. To get you ready for today's play-by-play -play action, we'll bring you interviews, in-depth analysis, and important game information on the pregame show. So let's get things started by going to the stadium and join our Talk Radio WRNR broadcast team. We're not going to the stadium quite yet. Good morning, everyone. I'm Nick Verzellini here on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. And we will begin the pregame show here in Martinsburg in the studio before we send it to the guys in Alexandria, Virginia for Martinsburg Bishop Ironton because we got a lot to break down in the mountain state in terms of high school football. So we want to get into some of that stuff before we get it out there to them. So let's start with the games we had last night in AAA. And we'll start here with those games. Last night, the game you listened to or watched if you tuned in, University beat Spring Mills 35-13. to Hedgesville wins to secure the 16th spot in the playoffs, 42-0 over Hampshire. Jefferson knocks off Washington. 41-17, Musselman beats Parkersburg 69-27, to and of course the game we have today, Martinsburg taking on uh, Parker or taking on Bishop Ironton, and that one gets started at noon, and we are starting the pregame show right now. Some games that did eventually go final here 
in the rest of the state that impacts that top 16 that we'll get into here in just a little bit as Park South beats Princeton 49-41. to That was a thriller. That was a big game. As we talked about, Martinsburg needed Princeton to win to maybe have a chance at a bye. Uh, Park South needed to win to help Musselman get a home game. We'll get into that in just a little bit. Great game between Huntington and Hurricane last night, number three versus number two. Huntington gets the win 24-21. George Washington beats Beckley 26-10 as number six wins over number 14. Lindsley defeats Morgantown, that three-way tie for number 10. That impacts things because, well, Jefferson was in there in that three-way tie. And then, of course, Wheeling Park destroys John Marshall 63-10. to So now we'll get into probably the most exciting part here of this beginning of the pregame show, and that's when we break down these first-round projected matchups according to uh, West Virginia Metro News. This is what they think will happen. Uh, once today's game is over and these rankings come out either tonight or tomorrow or whenever they do come out um, this week. And this is the matchups that they're looking at here first. And then where are the other? I had another graphic, but I don't know what I did with it. So mistake on my part there. But number one Park South is scheduled to play number 16 Hedgesville. That is our first round matchup. Number two, Huntington, is set to play number 15, Beckley. Number three, Martinsburg, is set to play number 14, Morgantown. Number four, Hurricane, is set to play number 13, University. And number five, George Washington, will play number 12, Princeton. And somehow my other graphic disappeared. I don't know what happened to it, but... Those were the top five matchups, and then the rest of the state would look like this. Uh, They are projecting number six, Bridgeport, to play against number 11, Cavill Midland, number seven, Spring Valley, to play number 10, Jefferson, and number eight, Musselman, to rematch number nine, Wheeling Park. So that's an interesting slate of games, I think. First, we'll get into one Park South versus number 16, Hedgesville. That's probably a lot to happen. Now, the interesting thing is Martinsburg obviously needs to win today to secure that number three spot. A loss today, things will shake up a little bit. The dogs would probably fall back to, I would guess, five of a loss today. But who knows exactly where they would shape out. Obviously, they want to win, and they're expected to win today against Bishop Ironton, to be quite honest. But you never know what could happen. But first, that Park South-Hedgesville game. Park South's been the number one team for the majority of the season. They are the best team record-wise in the state, um, sitting at 9-1, and one, but tied with Huntington there record-wise at 9-1. and one. But, <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of their scores haven't been all that impressive. They have a 59 nothing. They started the year insane. 59 nothing win over Capital, 78-14 over University. And then they beat Woodrow Wilson by a few scores, but that game was close at points. Toward the end of the season, though, they've proven to be vulnerable against some of the top teams. They lost to Bridgeport for the only loss on their resume. Barely slipped by Morgantown barely slipped by Wheeling Park and barely slipped by Princeton. So I think Park South goes down in the second round, personally. But I think first round, they'll take care of business against Hedgesville. Uh, and it could be tough one for the Eagles, but good for Hedgesville to make the playoffs. I mean, that was their goal this year, and Coach Faircloth has done a great job of that program. So then you have Huntington versus Beckley. Huntington already played Beckley, I believe, this year and once. I think they, the Highlanders do that again. Um, number three, Martinsburg versus Morgantown. It's an interesting matchup. It used to be two of the top teams in the state. Martinsburg is still one of the top teams, if not the top team, again, in the state this year. Uh, and I think they take care of business big over Morgantown, but it sets up uh, a fun matchup, I think, for the first round there. Hurricane and University going at it. 
I think Hurricane wins big. GW, Princeton, if that ends up being the matchup. I think uh, GW, uh, that's an interesting one, actually. I think Princeton could get the upset there. And it could definitely go either way between those two schools. Um, Bridgeport, Cabell, Midland, that's another really interesting one. That's going to be a quick one. You know, both those teams love to run the football, so that will be over in about two hours. So if you if you want a quick football game to go to next week, uh, go to Bridgeport, Cabell, Midland, because they're going to run the ball every single play. Spring Valley versus Jefferson. Unfortunately, I think the Cougars probably get destroyed on the road there. But I don't know. Spring Valley's been a little bit down this year, but I just don't see Jefferson going in there and getting a win. Uh, definitely a tough atmosphere. But, again, Jefferson's proven to play pretty well here toward the end of the season. So we'll see if the Cougars get that one. And then Musselman gets a rematch against Wheeling Park uh, earlier. Wheeling Park won big. So it's kind of interesting that even though Musselman lost to Wheeling Park, they're going to be hosting them for this first-round playoff game. It was a 34-7 win for Wheeling Park back when Musselman was number one in the state. I mean, the good thing for Musselman is they've already seen Wheeling Park. But it is tough to turn around a 27-point loss into a win. But you are at home this time. So that could change some things for the Appleman. We'll see. But that's kind of the early outlook here on these AAA playoffs and how everything went down last night uh, to get us to this point where we now have the playoffs. We know probably how these first-round matchups are going to look. Obviously, if Martinsburg were to lose today, that completely changes everything. But if the dogs do win, and we are expecting a Bulldogs win today, um, then nothing is really, or it's pretty much set in stone that Martinsburg will be number three and we'll kind of have an idea of these other, or these other matchups will probably stay the same. If I were to pick a game that I think will be the best out of all these matchups, I'd lean towards probably George Washington Princeton is definitely intriguing. And I think Bridgeport Cabell Midland. Those two games right there um, definitely stand out to me as probably being close ones. Um, there's some potential for Spring Valley Jefferson. I just don't know about the Cougars this year. I still think they're a tough team to read. And traditionally, Spring Valley has been one of the best teams in the state. But let's see here. The Timberwolves did beat Huntington by one point to kick off the season. So that's a little bit of an alarming win there if you're Jefferson. They started the year with a win over Hurricane. So, I mean, they've beaten two of the top three teams in the state, Spring Valley has. But then as of late, they've proven to be at least beatable. Cavill Midland knocked them off. GW knocked them off as well. So when you consider those two things, the team Spring Valley was at the beginning of the season versus the team they are now, that gives Jefferson some confidence. I think Jefferson actually makes it a little bit closer than maybe I initially thought there for the Cougars, but I still think Spring Valley gets that win. Um, But, yeah, like I said, I think GW Princeton could be good. Bridgeport, Cavill, Midland, that is going to be a running the football type of game. Bridgeport just beat Lincoln last night, 62-14. And Cavill, Midland was, no, they won over Riverside. I thought they were off, but they improved to 7-3 and three with a 42-14 win over Riverside. Let's go ahead and go through those scores from last night in AAA. Uh, so as we mentioned, big game last night, all the games, I guess I should say. I went through the, the initial games there, but... Spring Valley beat Sprint St. Albans 50-7. to seven. Um, Let's see. Lindsley beat Morgantown. We already talked about that. Um, let's see. Capital beat South Charleston. Meaningless game, but still Capital gets the win there to finish the year 3-7. and seven. Uh, Buchanan and Upshur beat Elkins to finish the year at 5-5, five and 27-0. Five, Greenbrier East beat Lincoln County 39-0. And Brook beat Preston. 28 to 14. So, pretty much the playoffs are set. We pretty much know all the games. Again, today, Martinsburg versus 
uh, Bishop Ironton will determine where the Bulldogs are. They're not going to get the buys throughout, or they're not going to get home field advantage, I should say, throughout the playoffs. But they will have it for at least the first two rounds, presuming Martinsburg again wins today. Um, and with that, you know, they can host those games. And there could be some upsets. Like I said, I think Park South is going down in the second round, which if everything plays out as normal, that would be probably Wheeling Park or Musselman. But I think Wheeling Park, since they won by 27 last time, probably win again, unfortunately for the Musselman fans and, of course, unfortunately for the Eastern Panhandle. And Wheeling Park almost beat Park South earlier. So I think they could they could upset in the second round, and that would allow Martinsburg to have home field throughout the playoffs. Unless I'm looking at the bracket wrong, and it goes to lowest seed, which then in that case we could see Princeton or Cabell Midland. But either way, uh, if they're able to pull off upsets, but either way, I think there's a good chance there for a upset in a Martinsburg home game for the, what would it be, quarterfinals or semifinals, excuse me. So that pretty much does it for this first segment. We will take a three-minute break. On the other side of that break, we're going to talk a little bit about Shepherd football since they'll be in action today, but we will not have the broadcast. And then we'll send it out to Colin and Dylan to give you a bigger breakdown on Martinsburg Bishop Ironton. But this is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. We're back in three minutes. W. Harley Miller Systems understands, understands the, the need and desire, desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. WB Medicine is pleased to introduce five new providers who've joined our medical staffs at Berkeley Medical Center, Jefferson Medical Center, and University Healthcare Physicians. Dr. Joseph Ahn, Oncology. Dr. Paige Anderson, Emergency Medicine. Dr. Akanksha, Bardwaj, Hospitalist. Dr. Vignesh Gunasakaran, Neonatology. And Dr. Stacy Hanlon, Anesthesiology. WBU Medicine, growing to meet the needs of our community. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. Berkeley County voters can help secure the future for our students by voting yes for the school bond on November 8th. This important bond includes over 100 district-wide projects to create safer schools, provide facility updates, and increase classroom space. The school bond supports many critical projects that cannot be financed through the annual school district budget. Vote yes for the school bond. Learn more at berkeleycountyschools.org. Paid for by the 2022 Citizen School Bond Committee of the Berkeley County Business Education Partnership. 
We welcome you back here on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. I'm Nick Verzellini, continuing to kind of give an overview of how the playoffs currently look in high school football. But now what we'll do is we will look at Shepherd Rams football because normally on TV 10 on a Saturday, uh, we would have Shepherd Rams football. But this game was moved to Saturday, so Martinsburg's kind of our first commitment there and Therefore, we won't have the Rams at the East Strasburg Warriors 105 kickoff today for Shepard Rams on the road, taking on the Warriors. And Shepard comes in undefeated at 9-0. and There's quite a few things on the line here today for Shepard. First of all, you want to win because the Rams are the number one seed in Region 1 as of right now. So a win continues to uh, secure that spot. They've already won the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference East Division, so a trip to IUP currently is still in place for a uh, win or lose for the PSAC championship game. Now, IUP may or may not end up being that team, but they have Clarion today. If it's a three-way tie still in the West Division, then IUP advances, so you can pretty much chalk it up. If you haven't seen Clarion, uh, well, IUP should beat them. But, again, anything can happen in college football any given Saturday, so don't want to overlook any team. But East Strasburg, first of all, just on the matchup here, and then we'll get into some other things that relate to Martinsburg High School, in particular with Tyson Bajan. East Strasburg is a 4-5 and five football team, but they've been impressive at times. A three-point loss to IUP who, as we just mentioned, is currently the best team in the West Division. A four-point loss to Kutztown, who's the second-best team in the East Division. A three-point loss to Westchester, which, I mean, Westchester's had a down year, but it's still one of the better programs. And then back-to-back wins over Bloomsburg and Shippensburg heading into this contest. So a team that Shepard definitely doesn't want to overlook because they've had some of the best teams in the conference kind of on the ropes and just barely lost to those teams. A combined seven points to IUP and cuts down isn't too bad. So this is a team that you have to look out for. If you want to watch that game at some point, kind of have a stream of both games going on, uh, you can tune in on the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference digital network. And we will try to provide as many updates as possible during today's broadcast of Martinsburg Bulldogs football. But... Um, the big thing on the line for the dogs is Tyson, or related to a Martinsburg alum, I should say, is Tyson Bajan is going for the all-time Division II touchdown record. And ironically enough, he's going up against East Strasburg, who holds the record. And the head coach, Jimmy Terwilliger, is the man who holds the record uh, for the most Division II touchdowns in a career. So Bajan can break that today with just two touchdowns. And if you've seen Tyson Bajan play, two touchdowns is like the rest of us walking outside. It's a pretty normal thing for him to do. Uh, So we will try to at least get the clip of that, if nothing else, for you during today's game. Um, As Shepard takes on East Strasburg and Bajan goes for that record. And the Rams go for the undefeated regular season continuing into the uh, conference championship game and I'll have updates at the half in terms of what's going on in the PSAC West so we would have a better idea of where Shepard plays next week because even though Shepard is the only undefeated team in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference they still have to travel because of how the rules work in the PSAC for the conference championship game it flips each year which division host this year is a west division hosting so shepherd's record does not matter in terms of hosting it matters in terms of getting there and that is what shepherd will do but uh let's see we got west virginia they're in action today of course and marshall as well but we'll start the mountaineers you can listen to the mountaineers game following the conclusion of this one they're at Iowa State today. The Cyclones are 3-5. and five. WVU is 3-5. and five. West Virginia pretty much needs a win to keep their bowl hopes alive. 
uh, because one of those wins came against Towson. You need six FBS wins most years, depending on how many six wins team six win teams there are. So West Virginia would need a win today to try to keep those alive. Obviously, one more loss would put you at six and six, but really West Virginia needs seven wins. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but Iowa State, it's a winnable game on the road. Both teams are three and five. The Cyclones have kind of struggled at times this year. So we'll see if Coach Brown and the Mountaineers can get one on the road again. That game begins at 3.30, and you can tune in right here following the game. You can't watch it on TV 10, but if you are tuned in on the radio or want to turn on your radio for the game, uh, 3.30 kickoff. So this one starts at 12. It pretty much will be back-to-back. Um, So, that is what's going on in college. Marshall's in action today as well. The Thundering Herd are 4-4 this season, and they take on Old Dominion, their old Conference USA foe. Again, a way game. 2 p.m. kickoff there. We'll see if Marshall can get the win over ODU. And... The entire state is done in high school football besides Martinsburg. They're the last team playing today, and they hope to be the last team winning in AAA when all things are said and done. As we talked about with the postseason playoff pitcher, pretty much set. Currently, the dogs, though, do need a win to secure the number three seed today against Bishop Ironton. One and eight are the Cardinals this season, but a private school in the state of Virginia that can certainly has some talent, just hasn't really put it all together to this point. So, one and eight football team, you would expect a Bulldog win, but again, you can never overlook anybody in high school football. Um, Colin and Dylan will have the call here in just a little bit. They'll give you an in depth breakdown of coaches' interviews, player interviews as well. And I'm just kind of talking to fill some time here because I don't have much else to say. But we do have a little bit of time before I'm ready to send it to them. I guess um, more about this or these games that you watched last night. Again, the final scores from last night's games, if you're just now joining us here on the pregame show. Last night, University defeated Spring Mills 35-13. to Edgesville knocked off Hampshire 42 0 to send the Eagles to the playoffs. Jefferson beat Washington 41 17 in the Jefferson County rivalry. Musselman over Parkersburg 69 27. Again, the game you have today Martinsburg taking on Bishop Ireton. And Hedgesville, with the win, securing that 16 seed, means we'll have four. EPAC schools in the playoffs in Martinsburg, Musselman, Jefferson, and Hedgesville. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I wasn't certain in the preseason if that would be a legitimate possibility, but it is. And uh, I think that shows how good the EPAC is this year because you look at the other uh, projected playoff teams, and typically we talk about the southern end of the state having a lot of competition down there. And there are definitely some good teams, but it's a bit more balanced across the state this year, and really the EPAC has been the dominant conference when it comes to who's going to be in the playoffs because you'll have 16-seed Hedgesville. Yeah, Beckley, they're in a different conference. Morgantown's obviously in a different conference. University, different conference there. Princeton, uh, you see the domination toward the top with Huntington and Hurricane and Spring Valley and George Washington. So there's definitely, you know, four teams right there from the Mountain State Conference. But the EPAC being right there with four of their own, I think, is pretty impressive. Um, so that, that's some interesting stuff in terms of how the playoffs are looking this year in the in the state. Unfortunately, there's not, I mean, it's fortunately for Hedgesville, unfortunately for the the staff that I just said in terms of uh, Hedgesville securing the 16th seed, but there's not a whole lot of controversy heading into today's game in terms of who's going to get in. 
so it's it's good, I think, from the fact that we know who's in and we know pretty much where they're seated, but it's just kind of different than uh, maybe a typical year when you have several teams that are right on the cusp and they're all kind of the same record and you really have to do the math. This year, not really the case. Hedgesville is the clear 16, and there's not much to break down there. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, Oak Hill did finish 5-5 five and five as well uh, as Hedgesville, but Oak Hill's wins were not good enough to get them in. So that's kind of, I guess, one team there that did not get in that was close to getting in. Um, but we will take a three-minute break. On the other side of this break, we'll send it out to Colin and Dylan for the rest of the pregame show as they'll break down this matchup. This is West Virginia High School Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. You've put up with your water long enough. It's time for Sunset Water Services, your local water solution since 1989, to fix your water problems. Get better tasting, better smelling, and better looking water today. Say hello to drinking your own delicious water for pennies per gallon. Say yes to healthier skin and hair and to softer and brighter clothes. Sunset Water Services delivers your bags of salt to you, so they'll save your back too. And our products come with a one-year satisfaction guarantee. Call 304-754-9031 for a free water quality test today. Sunsetwater.com. With Honda, every summer adventure is the destination. Take your adventures even farther with Honda, America's most fuel-efficient full-line automaker. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 2.9% APR on a 2022 Honda Civic and a 3.9% APR on a 2022 Accord or 2023 HRV. CMA's Honda of Winchester, 3985 Valley Pike. CMA, moving lives forward. See dealer for financing details. Exclude Civic SI based on EPA estimate of MY20 full-line automaker fleet-wide fuel economy. 2021 EPA Automotive Trends Report. You've been in an accident. Why won't the insurance company pay? Because they're trying to save money at your expense. Call Mansion Ferretti for your free consultation. We have the experience to deal with the insurance company and get you the compensation you deserve. Mansion Ferretti, when you need justice. This is Ben Copenhaver, your local alarm professional at Dynamark Atlantic Security. Did you know that home break-ins are 6% more likely during the day? That's right. The bad guys know when you're away, and they are smarter than you think. Dynamark Atlantic Security has the security solutions for you. Don't commit the error when the game is on the line. Phone me today at 304-671-2158 to learn how to play good defense against the bad guys. Dynamark Atlantic Security. Call today at 304-671-2158. When I was in high school, I was a troubled kid. Hannah Geffert took me into her family and treated me like her son. Today, I'm a U.S. Army veteran, a college graduate, and have a successful job. Hannah Geffert doesn't just talk about caring for children, she does it. She did it for me. Vote to keep Hannah Geffert as your state senator. She will take care of you too. This is Lauren from Orsini's right here in Martinsburg. Grilling is not just for the boys. We are a Platinum Traeger dealer carrying the Pro Series all the way up to the Timberline Series. We have every flavor of wood pellets along with accessories, rubs, sauces, not just Traeger. We carry Utz, Meat Church, Lanes, and Dizzy Pig. We also carry a full line of Yeti products. Orsini's has everything to complete your backyard. Visit us at 360 Hack Wilson Way or at Orsini's.com. I want to remind you that the Bishop Ireton Cardinal Crew Boosters are selling concessions. Good morning from Alexandria, Virginia. Beautiful morning for some brunch and Martinsburg Bulldog football live from Francis Fannin Field for the final game of the Bulldogs' regular season and the final game for West Virginia high school football. Colin McLaughlin alongside me. On the broadcast for Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 is Dylan Bishop. Our crew today is Donna Schaffner, Braden Schaffner, as well as Spencer Dupuy in back at the studio. It's Nick Verzellini who did a great job to start off the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. 
providing custom integration services like home and office automation, home theater, networking, audio, video distribution, and more. Phone 304-350-1931 or visit whmsystems.com. First time these two programs have met and they're kind of on opposite sides of the spectrum right now. Martinsburg enters the contest, Dylan, 7-2 and two overall, coming off the bye week last week. And on the other side, Bishop Ireton, 1-8 and eight overall, and really rebuilding right now. Yeah, this is a Bishop Ireton team that is going to be interesting to see here because they're coming into this obviously like you said one and one and eight on the season but they're going to play a lot of tough teams around the area here in virginia and washington dc as well so i mean they have a lot of uh, tough competition here like you said martinsburg is going to continue that trend uh, of tough competition number four team in the state of west virginia in triple a right now probably with a win they would move up to number three and secure that spot for the playoffs because of the loss by Hurricane against Huntington last night where Huntington was able to secure that top two seed. So Martinsburg is going to want to really come out here and go look strong coming into the playoffs and try to get this win, make sure that they can secure a home field advantage at least until the state semifinals. Also for those that were expecting us to uh, have Shepard Rams football today since it's a Saturday and that's who we usually carry but unfortunately we obviously don't have that game but we will do our best to provide as many updates as we possibly can on Shepherd's game against East Stroudsburg kickoff is at 1 p.m. but we do understand the fact that the quarterback of Shepherd and former Martinsburg Bulldog Tyson Bajant possibly today and most likely today will be breaking a few NCAA Division II records. And, Dylan, I know you know all about that. Absolutely. I'm a Shepherd alum myself, so you know that I'm keeping an eye on Tyson Bage and only two touchdowns away from tying the all-time career record for Division II touchdowns held by East Stroudsburg head coach Jimmy Terwilliger. So with three passing touchdowns today, Tyson can become the all-time leader in touchdown passes in Division II. He's only 11 from tying the record for any uh, level of college football. So he still has a few games left going into the postseason. They're the number one seed right now in the Super Region. So we're definitely keeping an eye on that today. But now let's get back and focus on the Bishop Ireton Cardinals, who are led by a newly head coach, Coach Wortham. He's a native of Alexandria, Virginia, and he's been coaching high school now for 31 seasons, dating back to 1992. He is coached at T.C. Williams High School, Lee High School, Falls Church, and the most recent ones in Prince William County. He was head coach at Freedom High School and Woodbridge High School. While at Woodbridge High School, Coach Wortham tied the best record in the history of football for that program in 2017 with a 12-2 and record, winning the Region 6C championship game, being named Region 6C Coach of the Year, and leading the team to the AAA D6 state semifinal game in 2019 is when Coach Wortham was selected to coach in the most prestigious high school All-American game known as the Under Armour All-American game held in Orlando, Florida. And during that year, Coach Wortham was the only coach in the state of Virginia to have two high school All-American athletes on his roster. Anthony Sampa, who's now at LSU, and R.J. Adams, now at Kentucky. So, as I mentioned earlier, Dylan, Bishop Ireton, 1-8, and eight, really rebuilding. But a guy like Coach Wortham and the resume he has, that's exactly who you want when you're in a rebuild mode. And you'll hear later on in the pregame from him to talk about just that as it's his full first season as he was the interim head coach last year. So technically his second. But when you look at his resume, it's very impressive and this team's in good hands. Right. And what you're going to see probably today from Bishop Ireton is a lot of running the ball. Uh, this is a team that has just about a two to one ratio of run to pass. 
and including their quarterback, who is their leading rusher for this year, Omar Diallo, number eight. He has 110 carries on the year for 708 yards and seven rushing touchdowns. So he's carried the ball 110 times. He's only thrown the ball 82 times overall this entire season for 394 yards, three touchdowns, nine interceptions. So this is a running team. Their leading rusher at running back is Trey Jones, 84 carries on the year, 224 yards, and a touchdown for himself. But this team really goes on the back of the legs of their quarterback, Omar Diallo. Yeah, I completely agree. And let's now look at the schedule that Bishop Ireton has had so far. They started off with a loss against St. Albans, but it was a close one by a final score of 20-17. to And then they were at Independence, losing 43-7. to against St. Stephen's and St. Agnes. It was a 35-17 loss at Potomac School. They had a 23-8 loss. St. John Paul, they defeated by a final score of 29-0, giving them the only win so far as they've lost to Archbishop Carroll, 42-14, Bishop O'Connell, 10-7, St. Paul the sixth, 41-0, and most recently, St. Mary's Riken, 53 to nothing. But you do have some impressive guys on this roster, and you'll hear Coach Gary Wortham Sr. talk about them later on in this pregame show. But guys like Amandi James, for example, the tight end and defensive end for this team, and he is very impressive. His senior year, a six foot five, two hundred sixty-five pound Division One recruit as well, Dylan. Yeah, he's going to be the main guy that, that Martinsburg is going to have to deal with when it comes to their offensive line, seeing if he can get pressure on these all, these guys back there like Ezra Bajan, Murphy Clement, try to disrupt the run game with Zion Grantham and Clement as well. So that's something they're going to have to watch out for. He's also the leading receiver on this team. Only has 13 catches, though. That tells you how much that Bishop Ironton passes the ball. Only 13 catches, 226 yards, and a touchdown. So, again, he's going to be a blocker in the, in the run game as well and maybe go out for passes here and there. So this is going to be a, a fun task today. It might be, might be a quick one considering how much the Bishop Ireton runs the ball. And if Martinsburg can get out to a lead like we kind of expect them to, we might have the same thing on the Bulldog side. All righty, we're going to take our first break from Francis Fannin Field as we're about 50 minutes away from kickoff between Martinsburg and Bishop Ireton, and on the other side of this break, you'll hear from head coach of the Cardinals, Gary Wortham Sr. You're tuned into Martinsburg Bulldog Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Are you considering selling your home and don't know where to start? Then call Chris Ross and the Milestone Real Estate Group at Keller Williams. A Martinsburg High School graduate, Chris knows the local market and he's proven it as number one real estate team in West Virginia in 2019. Phone Milestone Real Estate Group at Keller Williams at 304-579-7349 or go to callchrisross.com. Let's celebrate your real estate milestone together. What came first, the chicken or the egg? No matter what you think, you can have it either way. Rock's new bagel croissant and chicken waffle breakfast sandwiches are made fresh every morning. Rock's local market. Rise and shine. You're gonna be late for work. Good morning, sleepyhead. Have a good one. Rock's new bagel croissant and chicken waffle breakfast sandwiches are made fresh every morning. Rock's local market.
Hello, this is Mark Sutton of the Sutton & Janelle Law Firm. The right attorney can make all the difference in your case. That's why you should call Sutton & Janelle. We have been serving clients in West Virginia and Maryland since 1999 in the areas of family law, DUI, criminal defense, and personal injury. Sutton & Janelle works hard to obtain a favorable outcome for you at a reasonable rate with affordable payment options. Sutton & Janelle values your rights and is passionate about your success. Contact us today at suttonandjanelle.com. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Welcome back into the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show as it's now time for the coaches pregame interview brought to you by Parsons Ford, 1400 Shepherdstown Road and online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first, Parsons. As I'm now joined by Gary Wortham of the Bishop Ireton Cardinals. Coach Wortham, uh, first time that your program is taking on the Martinsburg Bulldogs. So just first off, if you can uh, tell us a little bit about your program's history in the school's history, please. Um, this is actually my 31st year coaching high school football. My second year as the head football coach at Bishop Ireton. Uh, we're a very young team. We are in the rebuilding phases, and uh, that's you know just been our purpose and, and mission since we took over as a staff. So this year, your team, as you mentioned, rebuilding one and eight right now. But the entire season, what has uh, really been the strength of your team? The strength of our team has just been the efforts of our players. You know, week in and week out. You know, making a purpose. You know, we played a lot of meaningful games, a lot of games we felt we should have won, you know, but this just in the recourse of rebuilding, you know, you got to figure out ways to finish games, and, you know, that's where we are as a program, just, you know, working on, you know, ways of finishing games. I mean, we've had a lot of success, you know, and just in terms of internal program successes versus the wins and losses, but, you know, if anybody knows Coach Wortham in his history, you know, wins and losses I build, you know, just not too meaningful for us right now, but, you know, do we want to win? Do we approach every game that we'd like to win? Absolutely, um, but with the rebuilding phases, you know, right now, just it's just not our time right now, but you know the future here at Bishop Ireton for football is in good standing. What's the biggest difference that you've seen in your team from week one up until now, Coach? Uh, just you know our our camaraderie, our team has you know built a bigger and better bond, and you know we're a private school, so our kids come from all over, and uh, just create that nucleus of team and family has been the biggest edge coming together towards the end of this season. You know, and that's that's just where we are. Who are some guys that uh, we can watch out for this Saturday afternoon? You know, we have. Amandi James, who has a couple of Division One offers, uh, Maryland, uh, William & Mary. Amandi James is a three-year starter here in this program. Uh, he's our tight end. He's one of our defensive ends. Uh, he's, he has not committed as of yet. And then we have the Elon commit, our offensive tackle, Evan Safried, who's committed to Elon, Division One. We have uh, Colin Hughes, transfer from C.D. Hilton High School. Uh, he's ranked number three defensive tackle in the state of Virginia. He's a junior. Uh, he has a solid offer from Coastal Carolina. You know, and then just the nucleus of our kids who've been here in the program before that uh, you know, are doing very well. We have Cameron Stanner, big offensive tackle, um, who's a D1 prospect as well. So we're, we're, we're in the right lane to you know, get our kids in some good places You know, as we, like I said, continue to build this program. We have our quarterback, Omar Diallo, transferred to us from Garfield High School. That's, that has had a, had a very good season for us. He's kind of been the hub and the nucleus of our offense with, our, with also our running back, Trey Jones, um, that's transferred in from Mountain View High School in Stafford County. Um, so we've got an abundance of guys, and you know, we, we, we just try to make sure we can, you know, put all the right tools together and, you know, make those tools work. What are some of the things that uh, you and your team have been focused in on this week to gear up for the game against Martinsburg? I mean, you know, just our tuning, you know, the things that we do in practice, you know, have pretty much changed. We, we have a system that we work on each week and we, you know, week out for our opponents. And uh, we just, you know, we're planning for them like we're planning for anybody else. Uh, the coaches create the script and the game plans and we implement the work, which, you know, we're out doing on the field right now. And then when you've been able to scout the Bulldogs, what have you seen so far? Oh, I mean, very, very disciplined team. Um, 
they do things very, very well. Um, I've heard a lot about them before we even scheduled them. You know, even how Coach and I came together to schedule them because we were having a little struggles trying to find teams to play, and we just ended up linking up, you know, just from our advertisements of looking for games. But, you no, know, we've heard a lot of Gunsburg High School football, and we see a lot of good things as we study them. What are you excited most about to have this matchup for the first time? I mean, as long as I've been doing this, um, I mean, my excitement week in and week out to play football is – it's pretty much the same. We're excited to play everybody. You know, I've got a staff of competitors, you know, in terms of coaches that have played in different levels of football. And, you know, we're geared up each week to just play the game. So, you know, it's just a game that we love. And, you know, it's a very good game. What are the keys that your team needs to focus in on to get the win Saturday? Uh, just just our regular commands. What we study, what we implement in the game plan. If we take care of those things, on any given day, anything can happen. That was the coach's interview with Bishop Ireton head coach Gary Wortham Sr. And your coaches' interviews, again, are brought to you by Parsons Ford of Martinsburg at 1400 Shepherdstown Road and online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first, Parsons. We'll be back for more of the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show after this commercial break. You're tuned in to Martinsburg Bulldog Football right here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. My kids, you know I want the best for you, don't you? We need to have a conversation. End-of-life planning is no one's favorite discussion, but the relief of having everything in place when the hour of need arrives is a gift. Give it to your family. Plan ahead with us. Brown Funeral Homes, a leading provider of cremations, invites you to explore the many flexible options of cremation. From environmental considerations to the benefit of greatly reduced cost, it may be the perfect answer for your family. Online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. Let's go! Drink some beers! Mountaineer Grill and Pub! Conveniently located right off 81 at 214 Mid Atlantic Parkway, Mountaineer Grill and Pub offers many daily specials, including happy hour 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. with $2 domestic bottles and $2.50 domestic drafts. Monday night is trivia night, Thursday night is wing night, and Wednesday and Sunday night is steak night. Let's go! Drink some beers! Mountaineer Grill! If you or someone you know suffers from the disease of addiction, help is available from the Berkeley County Quick Response Team with peer recovery coaches and support promptly to the homes of those who've recently experienced an overdose. This collective effort towards recovery brings resources and services to the community, including naloxone and treatment options. Call 304-267-1313 or visit the Berkeley County Recovery Resource Center, 400 West Stephen Street, Martinsburg. The Berkeley County Quick Response Team is funded through a DHHR grant with the Berkeley Morgan County Health Department. I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931 back to Alexandria, Virginia at Francis Fannin Field for more Martinsburg Bulldog football as we continue the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. 40 minutes or so away from kickoff between the Bulldogs and the Cardinals. And let's now take a look at your 7-2 and two Martinsburg Bulldogs coming off a bye week last week which gave them plenty of rest and much needed rest to get guys healthy and a few guys even more healthy and let's start there you got guys like X and Kendall 
as well as Roman Pearson, who we've seen in the past few weeks try to ease their way back in. And this was actually the time, at least for Roman, we were told that he was going to be back. So two weeks ahead of schedule for him was great, but a guy that is making his return today for Martinsburg. And we'll see how much he is in is number one, Sarad Musgrove, Dylan. Yeah, Musgrove has been, uh, when he before he got hurt, he had been kind of a dynamic playmaker for them on the offense and in the special teams game especially because he was averaging 30 yards per kick return. It was really that Sharando game where he had two or three pretty big uh, kickoff returns. He's only returned five kickoffs this season with the injury, but it's for 158 yards. So it was a really uh, impressive performance that he had, especially in that Sharando game. And it, it, them getting him back is just another weapon for them to have on offense to go around and on special teams to go with the likes of Dover and Hunter and all, everyone else that Azerbaijan can throw the ball to. And that's this, been the story with this team has really been the, the passing game, especially with Bajan here at 29 touchdowns and only four interceptions on the year and a 65% completion percentage. Incredibly efficient on the year, over 2,100 passing yards on the season. And then you got the running game as well, where Zion Grantham's over 500 yards, averaging nearly seven yards a carry. Murphy Clement is averaging seven and a half yards a carry. Those two combining for 12 rushing touchdowns so far on the year. So it's an incredibly dynamic offense that we have here. And it, it, looking at the stats before, you know, when we were on our last break there, it's been incredible for Jameer Hunter, especially, with what he's been able to do. He only has 28 catches on the year. He has 10 touchdowns and over 600 yards. And then he's got five special teams touchdowns as well. Uh, looking at the all-purpose yards, he's over 1,200 all-purpose yards, 1,218. And... He's only touched the ball 48 times this entire season. That's Every time he touches the ball, he's averaging 25 yards. It's an absolutely incredible year that he's had. Yeah, he's a special player, and with him healthy and all the other guys that we've already mentioned in that wide receiver core with Sarad Musgrove, Malachi Williams, Buzz Dover, Jameer Hunter, Roman Pearson, Avion Blackwood, Dominic Brinkley, they're all healthy and available today, so we'll have to see how much we actually see Murphy Clement lined up at wide receiver, or if he goes back to maybe that running back spot, or if it's just him and Ezra that go back and forth like the beginning, excuse me, the beginning of the season at that quarterback position. Yeah, we've I, still seen him in, but it's typically for a wildcat opportunity in the red zone. Yeah, I think we're going to see Murphy Clement go back to what was his in, the intended game plan with him, the quarterback, uh, you know, switching out with Ezra Bajan where they can run the ball a little more with Murphy. He only ended up ha having eight catches on the year so far. Two of those went for touchdowns. I had 148.9 yards, uh, giving him an average of about 18 yards a catch. But I think we're going to see him a lot more in that quarterback with the design runs for him, like was probably intended at the beginning of the year. Now that they have all these wide receivers back, now that they have Xavion Kendall back at running back. So... I mean, they have a lot of options to work with. Now they they ha they practice those and got those game reps in with Clement in at running back at wide receiver, so they can switch things around to their liking. But I think we'll probably see uh, Murphy Clement behind center uh, if uh, for the most of today's game. I agree, and it's nice to see everybody back with playoffs starting next week. As right now, according to the Week Ten postseason playoff rankings from the WVSSAC. Martinsburg is sitting in fourth place, but with all the other games yesterday, a win today would move Martinsburg up to that third seed, which guarantees you at least two home playoff games. But that final one, the semifinal, unless there's an upset of the two seed, you'd have to at least travel on the road once. And that two seed right now is Huntington. So if things trend that way where all the favorites are winning in the state semifinal, we could get a rematch of last year's state championship game, Dylan. Yeah, you could. I think, yeah, the way we're, it's looking right now, Spring Valley at number seven, that's who you would probably, or excuse me, if you're looking at the, the three seed, you're having uh, the number the number six team in the rankings. Which probably, is Bridgeport. Right. So you'd probably have Bridgeport in the second round, assuming that they wouldn't get upset. Was, 
last year's state semifinal team that Martinsburg beat at home. Right. So uh, what it looks like right now is that if Martinsburg wins today, they'll hop over Hurricane into the third spot. They'll face Morgantown at number 14. They win that game. They play the winner of Bridgeport and Cabell Midland. You assume that's Bridgeport, then they would face them. Both of those games would be at home. And then you, if you're hoping to have that state semifinal game in Martinsburg, you would hope that Huntington gets upset either in the first round by Beckley or by the winner of Spring Valley versus Jefferson. Yeah, even though it would be nice to play at home for that state semifinal game, we all know Martinsburg will play any team anytime, anywhere. And if that wasn't the case, we wouldn't be here today at Bishop Ireton to take on the Cardinals. Absolutely. It's just, you know, it's a matter of, you know, how many home, how many home fan, how many home fans, how many Martinsburg fans can you get out to the game? Who's going to make the trip down to Huntington uh, versus if you were able to get that game at home against a team like Spring Valley or or Jefferson or, you know, whoever it may be. So, that's that would be the hope, but this is a, a Martinsburg team can go on the road and play with just about anybody, Huntington, Hurricane, Park South, whoever it needs to be. So this is this is probably the most talented team in the state of West Virginia. Obviously, the two losses that Martinsburg had what I was about to that have up. kept them out of those top two uh, rankings, those top two seeds in the state, came to teams that are not from the state of West Virginia. So they are undefeated against teams in the state. It just happens that they put those tough games on their schedule to test themselves, and it didn't end up working out. So the consequence is maybe the state semifinals. You got to go to Huntington. But that's what that's the risk you take, and I think they're happy to deal with that. I think they are as well, but they're looking for win number eight to finish off the regular season, eight and two, and then next week, hopefully it will be a promising start to the postseason for Martinsburg, who's in search of that 10th state championship banner, ring, whatever you want to say. But for now, we'll take another break on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. And after that break, you'll hear from the Bulldogs head coach, Britt Sherman. And then we'll have another break. And on the other side of that break, you'll hear from Roman Pearson as well as Xavier Kendall. And then we'll be back and almost ready for kickoff live from Francis Fannin Field. But again, a two-minute break. You're tuned in to Martinsburg Bulldog Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV10. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated member FINRA and SIPC. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be this football season. Join us Fridays for Martinsburg Bulldog games, Saturdays for Shepherd Rams and WVU games, and every Monday, Thursday, and Sunday nights for the NFL Primetime games. We still have steak night every Wednesday, shrimp nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. So come on in and enjoy the Palace Lounge. We're located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. Looking for some nightlife? Then look no further. Laddie's Bar & Grill has a full bar and kitchen, pool table, and entertainment with great food at affordable prices. You can dine in or carry out by calling us at 304-263-5233. Laddie's is open Monday through Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 3 a.m. and Sundays from 10 a.m. to 3 a.m. We serve breakfast all day long, and our lunch and dinner specials are posted every day on our Facebook page. So stop on in to Laddie's Bar & Grill, located at 107 Lutz Avenue in Martinsburg. Hagerstown Ford continues to be your leader in car sales up and down the I-81 corridor. We will beat any and all competitors' prices. and We've made buying a new car easier than ever with one-day delivery better than Amazon and a return policy better than Walmart. 
Your satisfaction is our guarantee. If you don't like it, simply return it and we'll come pick it up. No questions asked. Why would you shop anywhere else? At Hagerstown Ford, we take great pride in our community and supporting our local student athletes. That's why Hagerstown Ford is the official car dealership of Shepherd Rams quarterback Tyson Bajant. Our remote buying process has made new car shopping so easy, you'll never even set foot in a dealership. Simply go to HagerstownFord.com and click on the car you want to buy it, or use the Axel Auto app. It's that easy. You can order your new car on any device. Go to HagerstownFord.com and get your new car signed, sealed, and delivered from Hagerstown Ford. We welcome you back to the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. It's now time for the coaches' interviews brought to you by Parsons Ford of Martinsburg at 1400 Shepherdstown Road and online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first, Parsons. Now joined by the head coach of the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Britt Sherman. Coach Sherman, coming off a of bye week, what was your team able to work on during that bye week and how you guys feel on this week? It was a good week. We, uh, we worked fundamentals, worked some techniques, uh, just got back to some of the basic things that we needed to get back to. We got a lot of guys reps. Uh, we finally have you know, a, a pretty much full roster with one or two guys still out varsity-wise, but uh, we were able to get a lot of reps in, rest some guys. So it was, it was a good mix of a week of, of getting a lot of work and a lot of rest in. And speaking of that roster, with the JV and freshman seasons both being done, you've got to call up a lot of the younger guys onto the varsity roster. So this week against a opponent like Bishop Ireton, who is in a rebuilding mode so far, will we be able to see some of those guys in if things go in the right direction for your team in the first half? Well, hopefully. Hopefully we'll get a lot of reps with, with a lot of guys. And, you know, Ireton is a team that uh, Coach Wortham's coming over there, and uh, he, he did a lot of really good things at Woodbridge back in the uh, late teens, won a bunch of 6A state championships. And so uh, it's one of those deals where he's just in there, he's starting to set the culture. But, uh, you know, they still have some really good athletes. And uh, looking at them on film and – and, and seeing their guys and, you know, if we let their quarterback get loose, I mean, he's scoring. I mean, they, they really have some good athletes that have some speed. So definitely not taking them lightly. We're trying to finish strong, and uh, hopefully we're, we're just crisp and, and execute really well. Yeah, talked with a coach over there for Bishop Ireton, and he was even mentioning some of the guys that have Division One offers for them already. And what else have you seen when it comes to their team that uh, you've – really been focusing in on when it comes to studying that film? Well, just that. Just I mean, they have some really good athletes, really good players. Uh, you can tell they haven't gelled real well because of just coaches, Coach Wortham's first year. But this is their last game. So they had a lot of guys out last week. He said they had some sickness. So uh, they're probably going to have those guys back this week. And we may see almost a completely different team than what we've been seeing on film. And then on your side, you mentioned a couple guys coming back healthy. Uh, some of those guys that We'll hear from later on in this pregame show, being Roman Pearson as well as Xavion Kendall. I know uh, you mentioned Sarad Musgrove's coming back this week. So how much is that really going to help come postseason? Well, it helps out a lot. It helps out a lot with depth. But, uh, you know, one of the things with, with Roman is the, the leadership on the field. He didn't have such a great game, really, per se, against Jefferson. But there were times where we'd line up and, he would be like, okay, you need to widen out, you need to do this, you got that, you got, and having that leadership back on the field to where I'm not screaming from the sideline, you know, on a play that we maybe only ran once or twice in practice, but Roman knows it because he's been running it for four years. Um, having that leadership's really good. Seeing X back on the field, getting touches, you know, he's explosive. Um, he's really a, a really good north-south running back that, that we can get a lot of good reps out of. And I'm just happy for those guys because they're seniors and uh, getting back. And then Sarad's very explosive. Sarad is uh, a guy, I think he's played most of his career with one hand um, being in a cast. He was in a cast last year, and then he's back in a cast now. And uh, But he's explosive, and he's got great ball skills. I think he catches better than half our guys do with, with a cast on his hand. What's the game plan for this week? Well, it's just going to be to, first of all, you know, have a great Saturday. It's going to be a beautiful day. Um, travel trip, use it as an experience, use it as a business trip, and um, just execute and play really hard and, and finish the regular season strong because, 
You know, I hear a lot of people talking about, well, this this ranking here, ranking there, and if so-and-so loses, but well, we don't take care of business and, and what we can control, and that's winning Saturday, then none of the rest of that stuff matters. And speaking of those rankings, have a pretty good shot if some things uh, go in place to have three home games if you can get to that second spot. I know you need uh, two of the three teams ahead of you guys to lose, and two of those three play each other. The one plays against Princeton. But if that happens, how much would it mean to you guys to have all three games at home? Well, it's great to be here at home. I mean, we have a great community support, amazing fan base. Um, so it's great to be home. And then when those teams have to travel all the way up here, it's also really big for us. And uh, I've heard coaches talk about that at different clinics, you know, just talking about, well, just that, you know, that long of a haul to get over here to play us um, is really a challenge as well. So it's great to have home field advantage for that. Um, you know, but we have to take care of business. We have to control what we can control. And, you know, we, we are going to have probably one home game for sure. Um, but then, you know, as it plays out, you've got to continue to win. And then those people that are, if they're in higher seeds than you, they have to continue to win to get home field advantage. So nothing's guaranteed. So, you know, we're going to work as hard as we can and control what we can control. And hopefully it works out to where we do have three home games. Back to the last week, being the bye week, we uh, came, had the Martinsburg Bulldog Bash. What's the update on how that went for you guys, and how can people still donate today? Well, the last that I heard, it was um, up around 15000 and uh, that's the last that I'd heard. We were still taking donations up until yesterday, Friday, uh, with the invoices, but you know, you can always go to www.martinsburgfootball.com. There's a donate button on there. You can join the dog club. You know, there's perks even in the dog club of, of parking uh, at the dog house if you're in the dog club for, for playoff games. So, uh, you know, make sure you take advantage of that and, you know, just continue to the support because I, I think a lot of people don't understand how, how much money it takes to run this program and the kids, what, what all they get back out of it. And, you know, every, every cent of it goes back to the kids and, you know, they're very appreciative and, and we're appreciative of the support. All right, Coach, anything else? That's it. Just thank, thanks again for that support on last Thursday and, and uh, just keep it coming. All right, thank you, Coach Sherman. Appreciate it. This has been the Coach's Interviews brought to you by Parsons Ford of Martinsburg. They became number one by making you number one first. Parsons will be back for more of the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show after this commercial break. You're tuned into Martinsburg Bulldog Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. If you're in an accident, the first thing that you have to do is call 911. You have to get medical care immediately. The next thing you need to do is call us. When you hire us at the Skinner Law Firm, what we do is we are going to investigate your case. And we're going to lay out the options that you have, all at no cost to you. We will use all of our resources and all of our experience to get you what you deserve. The Skinner Law Firm, SkinnerFirm.com. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. Hefley Motor Company, just off I-81 at 993 Hedgesville Road, is a family-owned and operated business providing the Eastern Panhandle with the highest quality pre-owned vehicles and customer service since 1997. Hefley is a pre-owned Carfax Advantage dealer. We're proud to be your partner serving the community. You're local, we're local, so why not buy local? Call us at 304-267-7172 or see us at 993 Hedgesville Road. And if you want to sell your car, we buy cars too. Check us out at Hefley.com. Hefley Motor Company, a nice place to do business. Hi, Crescia Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran-owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. 
We welcome you back to the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. It's now time to go in the huddle, brought to you by the Marius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, John Everson and Phil McCoy. You can locate their office at 1270 Winchester Avenue in Martinsburg or call them at 304-263-4343. I'm now joined in the huddle by Roman Pearson of the Martinsburg Bulldogs. And Roman, it's been an interesting season for oh, you yeah, to for sure. say the least. So uh, just walk us through how it's been for you so far. I mean, it's obviously been a tough time, you know, getting injured. I mean, I was prepared all off season, you know, getting ready and then got injured first game. But I just stand in there, stay in there strong. And especially with these young kids in here, had to help them. So let's start off and focus on that injury, what oh, yeah. the recovery process has been like for you. Um, not really. I haven't really been lifting as much, but a lot of, like, um, you know, not a... Uh, just different uh, stretches, curls. Yeah. Anything to really get that movement still yeah, going. Yeah, movement, more movement okay. than really benching or anything press like that. I've been trying to stay away from that recently, but. But as you also mentioned, and as I talked with a uh, coach two weeks ago before the bye, you still really been a leader for this team oh, yeah, in your sure. senior season. So even with the injury, how were you able to be that leader on the sideline for those young guys that had to step up in your guys' place, not just yours, but a lot of guys who unfortunately went out with injuries throughout this season? Making sure I stay in the game for sure on the sidelines, you know, calling pass when it's pass. I mean, when they look over, you know, telling the band plays, recalling it to the guys on the field and stuff like that. That's definitely and a And now job. you're finally back. Oh, yeah. So what's it been like the past few weeks uh, getting back out on the field and being able to actually be in the game? That's the best feeling ever. You know, and just, that, just being back on the field, it's a game I love. It's ex excited. Can't wait. And then you're a wide receiver as well as a safety offense, defense. Which one do you think that you're better at and which one do you like more? I like them both equally. I like hitting guys. Good answer. That's why I like playing safety and then I like scoring. Who doesn't love scoring? So I know we already mentioned that you haven't been in much because of the injury this year, but what has been your favorite moment so far this season? Probably Jefferson game and people getting, you know, hype, walking to see me walking out as the captain. So like that, that was definitely that was my favorite moment so far. Final game of the regular season this week on the road against Bishop Ireton. What have you been doing this week in practice to get ready for this game? Just making sure I get all the rust off for sure. I've been rusty. The Jefferson game was a little bit rusty. But shaking that off, having the bye week and this week really helped. What are some goals that you still have in place for you this year and for the team? Definitely make it a state's game and win every single game from here on out. No losses. That's the goal. All right, man. Anything else? Go Bulldogs. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it, Roman. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. As I'm now joined in the huddle by Xavion Kendall of the Martinsburg Bulldogs. Xavion just talked with Roman. It was an interesting season for him having that injury. You also had an injury week one of mm -hmm. been working your way back. So let's start just like how I started with him. What was the recovery process like for you? Uh, it's definitely a really hard process. Like you got to try to keep your mental straight and just all in general is a hard process because as a football player, this is like all I like grew up doing. So it's my senior year. So it's like having that injury in the first game, like thinking going to that game, we have a great senior year. Play with your brothers through the whole season, having to be injured for like eight games is definitely hard on your mental, and it's really like stressful. So, going through that process is definitely really hard, and I wouldn't wish it on anybody else. What are some of the things that you had to do to stay positive? Um, just uh, listening to my my teammates. Um, they, they really, I had a lot of support from other people around me too, like my family, even students in the school texting me sometimes, be like, "Keep your head up" and stuff. So, definitely. Uh, having support and also just trying to keep my head into, still keep my head into the game, coming to the games, watching and stuff, just watching them play. Just watch my teammates play, made me happy too, so. And it was yeah. a good season for them, especially mm -hmm. uh, Zion early stepped mm -hmm. up in that running back room for you guys. So what has it been like for you? I know you're finally back and healthy now and been playing, but during that timeout, uh, what were you doing leadership wise, just being able to encourage him throughout the year? Um, uh, after after uh, the Riverside game, I, I texted him. I told Zion, I was I told Zion myself, I'm really proud of him and how he progressed. Cause everyone used to look at Zion, oh he's little, he's he's not gonna play, but he he could play. He showed himself he could play, and I'm really proud of him to what he did and how he got on the field and proved everybody wrong and how he's a strong running back and he's a really great running back. I'm proud of him. And now the past few weeks, you've been back healthy, gotten some reps in. Uh, 
How's that been like so far, and how are you feeling now? Oh, I feel it's great to be back out, especially back out with my brothers, my running backs. Like I love, I love all my running backs, Zion, AJ, all of us, like the whole running back core. I love. We're a great, we're we got a great guy that running back. All three of us, oh, we're all great. And so it feels good to be back with my teammates. Feels good to be playing with them again. So it definitely feels good to be back out there. What's been your favorite part so far this year? Uh, being <laughs> being with the RBs, being with the RBs. I, I feel like we all have a real strong connection this year. So. It's great with that. All right, what are your goals for the rest of the year? One game left before playoffs. Uh, well, being injured really taught me, so I'm just trying to just cherish it. You know, cherish what might happen before my teammates, the trips we're going to go on to, and just cherish the rest of it because, you know, it can still be taken away just like that. So just cherish it with the rest of my team for sure. All righty, man, appreciate that and great answer. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us, and uh, good luck. This has been In the Huddle, brought to you by the Mirius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, John Everson and Phil McCoy. We'll take another break on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show and be back for more after that. You're tuned in to West Virginia High School Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Jambo Construction and Fencing Company, LLC, is a veteran-owned and operated company right here in the eastern panhandle of West Virginia that specializes in decks, fencing, and hardscaping. Find us on Facebook at Jambo Construction and Fencing to see more of the projects we've completed. For a free estimate, you can call Bo Bartley at 304-268-5452 or Jamie Gall at 304-279-5053. We are licensed and insured in the state of West Virginia, and as Martinsburg alums, we say, Go Bulldogs! My kids, you know I want the best for you, don't you? We need to have a conversation. End-of-life planning is no one's favorite discussion, but the relief of having everything in place when the hour of need arrives is a gift. Give it to your family. Plan ahead with us. Brown Funeral Homes, a leading provider of cremations, invites you to explore the many flexible options of cremation. From environmental considerations to the benefit of greatly reduced cost, it may be the perfect answer for your family. Online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. Happiness grows here. Ores Farm Market. Visit us at Ores Farm Market, just five miles west of Martinsburg, to pick up all your local fresh fruits and vegetables. With our in-house bakery, fresh fruit slushies, and apple cider donuts, you can't go wrong. Live bluegrass every Saturday from 12 to 5 p.m. And check out all that's local and delicious at Ores by going to OresFarmMarket.com or visit our Facebook page. Happiness grows here. Ores Farm Market. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football, Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney, Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials, or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus, too, along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. Colin. Thank you, Spencer. Apologize for a little bit of a uh, buzz there in his audio. Just had to readjust the wire and put it back into place, but we're all good and ready to go. Let's now get our keys to the game. The next key to your car is brought to you by the Hefley Motor Company, located at 993 Hedgesville Road in Martinsburg. You're local, we're local, so why not buy local? Spencer rides with them, so you should too. Dylan, I think the keys for Martinsburg today, uh, when it comes to the defense, I think that they need to make Omar Diallo throw the ball. He's a very uh, good runner of the football. He's their leading carrier to go along with being their quarterback. So if you can shut down him in the run game, try to make it, you know, him hand off the ball to the guys like Trey Jones or make him throw the ball, I think Martinsburg's defense can have a lot more success today. And then when it comes to the offensive side, they need to take the top off the defense, try to really get guys like Jameer Hunter over the top, make them have to work and make that Bishop Ironson secondary really have to drop back so that then you can throw the ball underneath to your other playmakers and they can make some plays out in the open field. And with, with for Bishop Ironson, that offensive line has to do what they can against this front four for the Bulldogs, including Rashad Reed and Xerxes Yancey. They're going to be a problem like they are for every team. And then on the defensive side, Bishop Ironson, you got to tackle. You cannot let these guys get into the open field like Dover and Hunter and Grantham and whoever it may be, Musgrove, Williams, Blackwood, whoever.
cannot let them get in the open field and break tackles and extend those plays and turn a 10-yard gain into a 25 or more yard gain. Yeah, we know that Martinsburg loves the screen pass, whether it's a wide receiver screen or even sometimes a little bubble screen or that fake wide receiver screen and then underneath to Clement we've seen a few times. But good keys to the game. Let's now get today's starters. And your starting lineups are brought to you by Jambo Construction and Fencing LLC, a veteran-owned company that specializes in decks, fencing, and hardscaping. For a free estimate, you can call Bo Bartley at 304-268-5452. And let's start off with the visiting Martinsburg Bulldogs starters on the offensive side. The starting quarterback is none other than number 13, Ezra Bajan. Your starting running back tonight is number five, Zion Grantham. Your H-back will be Cam Shallis coming in and out, but the wide receivers that will be starting are Sarad Musgrove, Buzz Dover, Jameer Hunter, and Roman Pearson. And then up front on that offensive line for Martinsburg, you got E.J. Hendricks, Brady Breeden, Peyton Kaufman, Rashad Reed, and Wes Hancock. Defensively, your starters for the Bulldogs. Up front on that defensive line is Aiden Fleming, number 70, number 50, Rashawn Reed, and number 56, Xerxes Yancey. Your linebackers are number 9, Cam Chalice, number 8, Jimmy Harden, number 14, Dominic Brinkley, and number 12, Braden Herring. Your safeties are number 11, Roman Pearson, and number 2, Murphy Clement. And then your corners will be number 10, Jameer Hunter, and number for Buzz Dover. You'll see a lot of guys on both sides of the ball shifting in and out as the wind continues to blow. Have to make sure that nothing blows away. That's why tape is a very helpful thing as well as Donna's hands too. Appreciate her pulling in the extra work for us as the executive producer. But let's now get the starters for the Bishop Ireton Cardinals. On the offensive line, it's number 77, Evan Seyfried. Number 55, Colin Hughes. Number 56, Matt Foley is your center. And then your guard is number 52, Joe Hardy. And at tackle, it's number 54, Aiden Connor. Your wide receivers are number 7, Brandon Diggs. Number 19, Nick Molesky. And number 30, Victor Attilis. And at tight end, it's number two, Amandi James. The quarterback is number eight, Omar Diallo. And at running back, it's number nine, Trey Jones. Now for the defensive side of the Bishop Ireton Cardinals up front. Three guys on that defensive line. It's number 55, Colin Hughes. Number 77, Evan Seyfried. And number two, Amandi James. Four linebackers. Number 12, Jack Taglia. Number 50, Perry Bourne. Number 20, Nick Chimera. And number 32, Latif Jean Felipe, who goes by LJ, so I'll probably be saying that a lot more because it's easier to say. <laughs> Your corners, you got four corners. Number 8, Omar Diallo. Number 15, Stephen and Tom Boy. Number 22, Aaron Rock. And number 9, Trey Jones. And those are your starters as we have both team captains coming out onto the field as Martinsburg in the all-white uniforms today with the black helmets and it looks like the four captains today for the Bulldogs number 13 Ezra Bajit, number 5 Zion Grantham, number 14 Dominic Brinkley and the speaking captains number 9 Cam Shallis as the rest of the Martinsburg Bulldogs make their way onto the field on the far right side onto the track and we have two captains excuse me four captains now as there are two others trailing behind for Bishop Ireton. Looks like Bishop Ireton's captains are number 22, Aaron Rock, number 12, Jack Battaglia, number 77, Evan Seyfried, and number 2, Amandi James. Thank you, Dylan, as we try to readjust some things so that nothing blows away. Even the tape now on this table is slowly uh, failing, but as both <laughs> sides, team captains will now go out to the 50-yard line. And then we'll have the coin toss as the Bulldogs take the field to the applause of the fans that did make the trip to Alexandria, Virginia. Both sides team captains will now shake hands and we'll wait and see what the call is. But before we take our break, Dylan, any final thoughts before we get ready for kickoff? 
No, I, I think this is going to be a good, uh, I guess you could call it a playoff tune-up for the for the Bulldogs, get in this last game. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if they end up with a Friday playoff game. They're going to have a, one less day of rest than other teams in the state. You know, if they end up playing Morgantown, Morgantown played yesterday and ended up losing that game. So they'll have seven days versus six if they, if they play that Friday game this upcoming week. All right, it looks like Martinsburg will receive as Bishop Ireton won the toss and elected to defer to the second half. So we'll take our two-minute break and then be back for the opening kickoff between the Bulldogs and the Cardinals. You're tuned in to Martinsburg Bulldog Football on WRNR Martinsburg. I'm Jason Barrett. I'm running for state senate because I believe it's time to build an even better West Virginia. That starts with a less burdensome tax policy, reliable Internet service, strong education system, and a robust tourism industry. I believe this building starts right here in Jefferson and Berkeley counties. I ask for your support and your vote on November 8th. Paid for by friends of Jason Barrett. I'm Jason Barrett. I'm running for state senate because I believe it's... Jambo Construction and Fencing Company, LLC, is a veteran-owned and operated company right here in the eastern panhandle of West Virginia that specializes in decks, fencing, and hardscaping. Find us on Facebook at Jambo Construction and Fencing to see more of the projects we've completed. For a free estimate, you can call Bo Bartley at 304-268-5452 or Jamie Gall at 304-279-5053. We are licensed and insured in the state of West Virginia, and as Martinsburg alums, we say, Go Bulldogs! And that concludes today's pregame show. We play every play like it's the most important play of the game. Who let the dogs out? Coming up next, it's the starting lineups, opening kick, and play-by-play action of West Virginia high school football featuring the AAA Martinsburg Bulldogs. Today's game is being brought to you by Bechtel Jewelers, the Brown Funeral Homes and Cremations, Chris Ross with the Milestone Real Estate Group. The Skinner Law Firm. Hagerstown Ford. The Mansion Ferretti Law Firm. The Myriads Group of Financial Advisors. Orsini's Home Store. Parsons Ford of Martinsburg. Sutton and Janelle Attorneys at Law. CMA Honda of Winchester and WVU Medicine. And now, let's go back to the field and rejoin our Talk Radio WRNR broadcast team. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please remain standing for our national anthem. <laughs> as the national anthem has concluded from Francis Fannin Field as we get ready for kickoff between the Martinsburg Bulldogs and the Bishop Ireton Cardinals. Colin McLaughlin for Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 alongside me is Dylan Bishop. Our crew 
is Donna Schaffner, Braden Schaffner, our cameraman, sideline reporter and cameraman as well as Spencer Dupuy in back of the studio. It's Nick Verzellini again. Bishop Ireton won the toss, elected to defer to the second half, so it will be Martinsburg to receive the opening kickoff. And your opening kick is brought to you by Oris Farm Market. Family owned, family grown. Happiness grows here at Oris Farm Market located at 682 Or Drive in Martinsburg. Back to return is Avion Blackwood and Jameer Hunter for the Bulldogs. Lined up on the right side going towards the left end zone at Francis Fannin Field. So we get ready for Kickoff on to kickoff is number 11, excuse me, number 86, my apologies, Jack Wheeler. As Wheeler and the Bishop Ireton Cardinals get ready for the opening kick. As Bishop Ireton in the gold helmets with the logo on the left and the right. Black uniforms on the top with gold numbers and white pants with a gold and maroon, or excuse me, burgundy, I believe, trim down the side. Wheeler's ready to kick off, and his kick from the 40 will go high end over end and into the end zone caught by Hunter for a touchback. So it'll be first and 10 Martinsburg at the 20-yard line to start things off. Yeah, the returners at about the five-yard line, they were not expecting such a good kick from Wheeler there. How about that? So make sure that the Bulldogs can't get a good return to start things out. Ezra Bajan in the Bulldog offense makes its way out onto the field on Martinsburg's 20-yard line, first and 10. Bajan in shotgun formation. It is Grantham lined up to his left, two receivers to each side. The two on the near side, Jameer Hunter and Avion Blackwood. The two on the far side, Dover and Pearson. Handoff from Bajan to Grantham. It goes up the middle, breaks through one tackle, but immediately is wrapped up by Evan Seyfried. That'll bring up second down after a three-yard gain. A nice little th uh, run there to start things out with Grantham. Get him going. This team's probably going to be able to. We're probably going to be able to pass the ball a good bit on this Bishop Iron in defense, or they're going to at least attempt to. But you got to keep him honest with the run game as well. 11:30 to go in the first quarter. Bajent. Shotgun formation, Grantham to his right, two receivers to each side. Bajant drops back, looks to pass, fires at the far side, caught by Dover for the screen, but he's immediately wrapped up for a loss on the play, and that'll back him up three yards to make it a third and ten. And that was what I mentioned in the pregame is one of the keys of the game, and Bishop Ironton has to tackle. You don't make a tackle like that. That's a, Instead of a two-yard loss, that's at least a five-yard gain. Martinsburg hurries to the line, flips formations, trips to the near side, one receiver to the far side for Bajan. Bajan fakes the call to see if he could get one of the Cardinals linemen to jump. Now he resets. 14 to go on the play clock. The snap, dropping back the pass is Bajant, looking downfield as all the time in the pocket. Chucks it deep, wide open, Roman Pearson over his head, but he catches it at the 45-yard line of Bishop Ireton. A big play makes it first down, Martinsburg. That was a tough catch there by Pearson. Man, he had to really turn. It was really a tough ball to track there, but he was able to make a acrobatic catch there. First wow. and 10, they say he was down at Bishop Ireton's 47. Handoff goes Grantham. He can't find a hole immediately stopping him. His number 12 for Bishop Ireton, Jack Battaglia. But it's a three-yard gain to bring up second and seven for the Bulldogs with 10-19 to go in the first. So here you go. Bishop Ireton couldn't quite get them off the field on third down. That's going to be another big thing for them today. You get the Bulldogs to third down, but then can you capitalize, close out? Snap, handoff from Bajan. Grantham up the middle, as a hole. Pataglia gets an arm on him, breaks through that, but he's wrapped up by Rock. It's another first down for Martinsburg as they go at the 30-yard line is where they'll say Grantham's knee went down, but it's first and 10, Bulldogs. It's good blocking by the Bulldogs offensive line that time to open up that hole. Grantham was able to get it out. You know, almost 10 yards before he made any contact with anyone. Two receivers to each side for Bajant. Grantham lined up to the right. Bishop Ireton sending a blitz. Wide open up the middle. Caught by Grantham from Bajant. And he's tackled at the 10-yard line. A 20-yard gain makes it first down. And they'll say he was stopped at the 11. So it is a first and 10 for Martinsburg. They went with the fake screen that time into some verticals there up the field. 
Two receivers to each side for Bajant. Gets a snap, handoff, Grantham tries to go up the middle, cuts back to the left side, going towards the pylon, but he's pushed out of bounds. Just outside the five, mark it at the six-yard line, so a four-yard gain will make it second down and three. And Grantham has been the key cog on this drive through the passing and the running game. Really strong start for Zion Grantham. Martinsburg going, hurry up. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side for Bajan. Gets the handoff, looks to the far side. It's a bubble screen caught by Pearson, makes one man miss. Tries to slip through another, another but he's going to be tackled. And it will bring up a third down, no yards gained. Ball on the six-yard line. they got to get to the one for the first down. Another good job of tackling there by the Cardinals. Didn't let Pearson break tackles get in the end zone. Bajant tries to make a man jump, and he does on that far side as it was Perry Bourne, the linebacker. Looks like will be called for the encroachment for the Cardinals. And we'll have to see if that's enough for a first down for Martinsburg. Now still third down, half the distance from about the five to about the two and a half. Third and short, 8.45 to go in the first. Bajant shotgun formation. Grantham to his left, two receivers to each side. Bajant gets the snap, hands it off to Grantham, up the middle and in. Touchdown, Martinsburg. 6 nothing with 8.38 to go as Grantham gets the first one of the day for the Bulldogs. Five carries for 28 yards on that drive for Zion Grantham and then coming in with a 19-yard catch as well. Great drive there. Really just Grantham that it was... Carried the load there. Made things easy for Ezra Bajan. A lot of screen passes, a lot of short dump-offs and handoffs. Terwilliger on to attempt the PAT, but they're in the Shih Tzu formation. Snap down, hold by Pearson, and the kick is up and good from Terwilliger to make it 7-0 Martinsburg. We'll take a one-minute break. You're tuned in to Martinsburg Bulldog Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. At the Berkeley County Health Department, our motto is prevent, promote, protect. Since 1935, our mission has been to provide clinical and environmental services to protect the health of the general public. We're committed to building public health in our community by offering a wide range of services, including blood pressure screening, breast and cervical screening, family planning, counseling, lab testing, and more. We perform health inspections to make sure the restaurants you visit are clean, and we prepare and coordinate plans to respond to all hazards. The Berkeley County Health Department, 122 Waverly Court, Martinsburg. You've been in an accident. The choice of a lawyer may be the biggest decision you make for you and your family's future. At Mansion Ferretti, we offer a free consultation and no fees until we win your case. Call us today and protect your future. Mansion Ferretti, when you need justice. And in field, it's Martinsburg 7, Bishop Ireton nothing to Werliger to kick off. High end over end kick that's short at the 40 yard line. And making the catch for Bishop Ireton is Nick Molesky, and he's immediately wrapped up by Williams. But it's a first and 10, Bishop Ireton at the 39 yard line, so solid field position to start. And Dylan, let's quickly get a scoring drive summary brought to you by Jason Barrett for State Senate. Vote to cut the car tax. Vote Jason Barrett for Senate. It was a nine-play, 80-yard drive, finished off by the three-yard touchdown by Zion Grantham. 47 of those yards on that drive came from, from Grantham on the ground and through the air. So first and 10, Bishop Ireton, Omar Diallo at quarterback with Trey Jones in shotgun formation to his right side at running back. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near, the one in the slots, the tight end, Amandi Jones. Yellow claps, gets a snap, it's high, hands it off to Jones, and Jones immediately wrapped up in the backfield by E.J. Hendricks to bring up second down and a loss of two to make it second down and 12. Yeah, like we said, Bishop Ironton's going to run the ball a lot, but the number one strength of this Martinsburg Bulldogs team is the run defense with Rashawn Reed and Xerxes Yancey, especially up front, and you got E.J. Hendricks playing nose guards as well today. Second down, 8-10 to go in the first. Diallo keeps it himself, tries to find a hole on the left side, breaks through one tackle, but's wrapped up by Jimmy Harden and Cam Shallis out across the 40, stop him at the 41, and that'll bring up a third down and eight 
for Bishop Ireton. So that's going to be the tough thing for the Cardinals is getting into these third and long situations when you're such a run-heavy team. Are you going to be able to, to get the ball through the air to get these long third down conversions? Two receivers to the near side and the far side for Diallo. Jones lined up to his right. Diallo gets the snap, rolls out to his right. Martinsburg sends the pressure. He hits as he throws to the far sideline. In and out and caught by Jameer Hunter for the interception at the 26-yard line of Martinsburg. What a play by Jameer Hunter. He went up for it, had it in his hands, dropped it, but was able to regain it while hitting the ground, make it first and ten Bulldogs. That is the sixth interception of the year for Jameer Hunter to go along with 1,200 all-purpose yards, 25 yards per touch on the season. He has been an absolute menace on all three phases of the, of the game for the Bulldogs this year. That pass was intended for Victor Attilis, but it's first in 10 Martinsburg. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near for Bajant. 7.26 to go in the first at 7 nothing Bulldogs. Bajant pump fakes. Steps up in the pocket, fires it across the middle. It's caught by Clement on the far side. Out across the 40 at the 35. Stiff arms, breaks through one tackle down the sideline, but it's pushed out of bounds at the 28-yard line. A big play puts them in Cardinal territory. They went with the same thing that time that got them that pass down to Zion Grantham. Fake the screen with, with Buzz Dover and then have vertical routes down the field. That time Murphy Clement was just wide open. And it looks like we have an injured Cardinal down at the 15-yard line on the far side trying to see who it is. I believe it's Aaron Rock, one of the corners. And that's that's tough. With 7.13 to go in the first, it is Martinsburg 7, Bishop Ireton nothing. And it looks like we're going to keep it here as He's Rock able to get right back up, yeah. Right back up and on his feet. It looks like it might just be... A little bit of a stinger in his right arm as he's yeah. keeping it close to his chest, but now he's moving around, so he looks to be okay. So we wait for both teams to take some quick water breaks as it's a very warm day with the sun shining in Alexandria, Virginia. Right, we've got some cloud coverage with the sun behind us right now. Well, hopefully that, hopefully we can stay with that so now, since we're up on the roof here. Yeah, right now it says it's 74 degrees according to my phone. It's a high of 78 later on. So a beautiful day for Bulldog football. If you didn't know any better, do you think it's week one on August here or uh, September? Not November the 5th. Right. First and 10, Martinsburg. Trips to the near side, one receiver to the far side. It's Dover, Clement, and Pierce in the three to the near. Hunter, the one to the far. Bajant in shotgun formation. Grantham to his right. Inside zone read goes Grantham. He has space at the 10-5 into the end zone. The second touchdown of the day for Grantham with 7.07 to go. It's now Martinsburg 13, Bishop Ireton nothing in the first quarter. Again, the Bulldogs' offensive line is just able to move those guys around on the Cardinals' to front. And by the time he gets into the second level, he's got, you know, he's got a little bit of speed going, and there's nobody that can catch Zion Grantham. Again, Shih Tzu formation, three linemen up front, three guys to the right side and three guys to the left side. Twilliger on to attempt the extra point. The kick is up, almost blocked, but it goes right through the uprights, and good. So 7.07 to go. It's now Martinsburg, 14, Bishop Ireton, nothing. And we'll keep it here and give you our first quarter sponsors as we're presented on TV 10 by Senator Hannah Geffert. Keep Senator Hannah Geffert this November 8th to re-elect her. Visit HTTPS www.SenatorGeffert.com for more. We're also presented on TV 10 by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg. Your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive in Martinsburg. Phone 304-263-3361. The last one of our first quarter sponsors were brought to you by Parsons Ford at 1400 Shepherdstown Road and online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. To Williger on to kick off. Back to return all by himself for Bishop Ireton is number eight, Omar Diallo. He's lined up at the 10, but it looks like, count them, six guys to the near side of the field for the kickoff formation. 
And then four to the far side for Brett Tewilliger, who has his green kicking tee lined up at the 40-yard line, right side hash closest to the Martinsburg sideline on that far side. So we'll see if he does another short kickoff or if he goes onside as the hands team is on for Bishop Ireton. And it looks like they got eight guys up front between the 50 and the 40-yard line on the Cardinal side. But Twilliger will kick it deep, end over end, over the head of Diallo, bouncing in the middle of the end zone and rolling out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. I think it says, I think just another kind of little tidbit here with with Bishop Ireton tells you a lot that their quarterback was also back as their kick returner. I tell you, you know, he's their leading carrier, he's their quarterback throwing the ball. And it just shows that they put they, you put a lot on the back of Omar Diallo in this game. So if you try to shut him down, if you're in Martinsburg defense, I think a lot of things can fall into place after that. First and ten for Bishop Ireton. It's Diallo in shotgun formation with now Jones to his left side as well as number 15, Stefan and Tomboy. Snap back. Quarterback keeper, but Diallo is tackled for a loss on the play. Put him at the 15-yard line, so a five-yard loss makes it second and 15. And that's exactly what I mean there. If you can key in on Diallo when he keeps it and tries to use his legs to run the ball, then you're hoping that eventually Ironton adjusts, starts doing more handoffs, tries to pass the ball, and you hope that that's a little bit less of their strength. Bunch formation, three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Diallo, snap, rolls out to the near side, steps up, and from behind, wrapped up by Braden Herring. Another loss on the play will bring up third and long with 6.19 to go. We have an injured Bishop Cardinal down. Aiden Connor it was hurt, so we're going to pause for a 60-second break and then be back. You're tuned in to Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. If you're in an accident, the first thing that you have to do is call 911. You have to get medical care immediately. The next thing you need to do is call us. When you hire us at the Skinner Law Firm, what we do is we are going to investigate your case and we're going to lay out the options that you have, all at no cost to you. We will use all of our resources and all of our experience to get you what you deserve. The Skinner Law Firm, SkinnerFirm.com. With Honda, every summer adventure is the destination. Take your adventures even farther with Honda, America's most fuel-efficient full-line automaker. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 2.9% APR on a 2022 Honda Civic and a 3.9% APR on a 2022 Accord or 2023 HRV. CMA's Honda of Winchester, 3985 Valley Pike. CMA, moving lives forward. See dealer for financing details. Exclusive SI based on EPA estimate of MY20 full-line automaker fleetwide fuel economy 2021 EPA automotive transfer part. Welcome back. This is Aiden Connor, the injured Bishop Ireton Cardinal, up and onto the near sideline. So it's now third down. Ball on the 14 yard line for the Cardinals. Diallo, high snap, drops back, looking to pass, steps up in the pocket, and he's going to keep it himself. Break through one tackle. Blocks down the near sideline, out across the 40 at the 50. Goes Diallo at the 40 in Martinsburg territory. He's going to be tackled by Buzz Dover, and they'll say he stepped out of bounds at the 32-yard line, but hold on one second as there's a flag back at the line of scrimmage. And it looks like there might be two, and it's a holding against Bishop Ireton. So that big play by Diallo is going to be negated and brought back. Man. And against a team like Martinsburg, that hurts. Yeah, you really hate to see that for Bishop Ireton. That would have been a 57-yard rush by Omar Diallo. It was a good block by his wide receiver, uh, out on the on the side there, that was number 19, Nick Molesky, that was able to bust that open from a potential just a first down to breaking that all the way down the field. But that's going to put them at the at the one yard line, maybe one and a half. One and a half, two. Man, but now yeah, you very have to be careful. Very tough as they're now in the shadow, of the Cardinal end zone for a third and very long as they have to get to the 30. So it is a third and 29 for Bishop Ireton. And you got all your quarterback and running back all in the back in the, their own end zone yep, here. Yep, Tom Boy on the far left. It is 
Diallo in at quarterback. But we'll have a timeout for Bishop Ireton. And since we just took one for the injured player, let's keep it here as it's Martinsburg 14, Bishop Ireton nothing with 5 minutes and 48 seconds to go in the first quarter. And Dylan, the offense all around has looked really solid for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Zion Grantham especially. He had uh, 47 yards from scrimmage on that first drive, and then he tallied on a 28-yard touchdown run on the second drive. And, you know, Ezra Bajan as well only, or I was going to say only one incompletion, but he's actually thrown no incompletions. He's, uh, one of those was for a loss of two on a, on a screen play here. But he's 5-for-5 he's five five so far. He's gotten himself already over 100 yards passing on the day. So it's a strong start all around, running and passing so far for the Bulldogs. You can just tell that they, they have better athletes than this Bishop Ironson team does. Looks like the timeout is getting ready to conclude as Martinsburg will break the huddle on the far side, and so will Bishop Ireton on the near side again. It is third down for Bishop Ireton in the Cardinals' offense. They have 29 yards to go after the holding penalty put them back at the one-yard line, and it is Omar Diallo under center. Bishop Ireton decides to go in power eye formation. Martinsburg sending the blitz, and it's going to be a safety as Rashawn Reed gets there first to wrap up Trey Jones. And with 5.45 to go, it's now Martinsburg 16, Bishop Ireton nothing. I had a feeling that's how that was going to go. I thought when they lined up under center, thought to myself, if that should be a quarterback sneak because I think Going with a handoff here with this Bulldogs defensive line, Rashad Reed's going to get back there almost every time. So it's it's a you're running a risk with a with a handoff, and that's exactly how it ended up happening. So Jack Wheeler will now kick off for Bishop Ireton, and due to the safety, it will be a kickoff from the 20 yard line. Back to return for Martinsburg will be Jameer Hunter and Avion Blackwood. Now this is dangerous territory here. The kickoff after the safety coming from the 20-yard line instead of uh, the normal kickoff spot. They were able to get a touchback on their first kickoff, but with you, you, you'll probably see if you're watching on TV, Hunter and Blackwood are lined up at the 25-yard line of if you of remember from two weeks ago exactly. against Jefferson, yep. not one, but two kickoff return touchdowns for Jameer Hunter in that 63-13 win, and one of those two were on a kickoff after the safety. Exactly, yep. So, got to be real careful here if you're the Cardinals. Wheeler on the kickoff. Again, it's from the 20 as Martinsburg's up 16 to nothing with 5.45 to go in the first. Wheeler raises his right hand, runs forward, and his kick high end over end will be caught by Jameer Hunter at the 21-yard line in the middle of the field. He has blockers in front of him. Breaks through one tackle. There's a flag back, but Hunter's still going and will be tackled at Bishop Ireton's 40-yard line. And it's an illegal block in the back against Martinsburg, so it's going to back up the Bulldogs as the flag will be thrown at, I believe, either the 40 or the 39-yard line of Martinsburg. Have to wait and see where the initially will say it was and then we'll get you where the first and ten is from once we know where the ball spotted. That's exactly what we were talking about there, though. Even with that block in the back, Hunter was – if, if that last tackle wasn't made there at the 40-yard line of the Cardinals, he would have gone the entire rest of the way for that touchdown. I think he – honestly, he probably juked the wrong way. He tried to juke to the right, could have juked him out to the left, kind of used his speed, could curve out a little bit, and he probably just could have outran him to the end zone. But so they say it still comes back with the penalty. First and 10, Martinsburg on the Bulldogs' 30-yard line. Two receivers to each side for Bajan. Quick pass to the far side. It's a screen pass caught by Pearson. He slips through two tacklers. Will be pushed out of bounds across the 40, but we have another flag thrown from that far sideline. And we're waiting to see who it's against as they will pick up the flag. And it's a personal foul, it looks like, against Martinsburg. 5.31 to go in the first. It's still 16-0 Bulldogs. That's going to back up Martinsburg's offense. 
to the 26-yard line. So two straight penalties right there. So that, that's, that's really tough there. Two receivers to the far side, two to the near side for Martinsburg. It's Bajan in shotgun formation with Grantham to his left. Jet sweep to Pearson. Pearson gets a block from Harrison, slips through one tackle. Now past another, trying to spin off a third. He's going to be pushed forward out across the 40, and it's one yard enough for a Martinsburg first down. That was some nice shiftiness there from Roman Pearson, be able to get, make guys miss. That's what we were talking about for Ironton. It's Gotta nice having him tackles. back after breaking his collarbone in week one and returning with limited snaps against Spring Mills. First and ten ball on the 41. Handoff. Harrison goes up the middle, lowers his head, but he's stopped after a four-yard gain, or excuse me, a three-yard gain. So they say he'll be at the 44, bring up second down with 4.45 to go. Better be careful here if you're Ironton. I've seen a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage with Jameer Hunter on the outside. Got Omar Diallo covering him. Well, now it looks like they're doubling him. Bajant drops back to pass, looking for the wheel route to Harrison on the near side. He catches it at the 40, at the 30, going on the near side. Nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown, Martinsburg. 4.24 to go in the first quarter. It's now Martinsburg 22, Bishop Ireton nothing as Bajan gets his first touchdown pass of the day to A.J. Harrison. I mean, that was just, it was a great read by Bajan to see the blitz coming off the left side from Bishop Ironton number, when they had number 12, Jack Pataglia, coming off. And then it was just one-on-one -on -one coverage for Harrison. He had to beat him, and it was great placement on the throw by Bajan just in the bread basket, and Harrison used his speed to go the rest of the way. There was no one on that side of the field. To where we're on to attempt... Pearson gets it, shits you formation, he throws it to the far side, and it's caught, but immediately wrapped up, so the two-point conversion to Cam Chalice is no good, as Jones was able to make the stop, so with 4.24 to go, it remains 22-0 Martinsburg. We're back in 60 seconds, you're tuned in to Talk Radio WRNR in TV10. Are you considering selling your home and don't know where to start? Then call Chris Ross and the Milestone Real Estate Group at Keller Williams. A Martinsburg High School graduate, Chris knows the local market, and he's proven it as number one real estate team in West Virginia in 2019. Phone Milestone Real Estate Group at Keller Williams at 304-579-7349 or go to callchrisross.com. Let's celebrate your real estate milestone together. Hi, I'm Annette McDonald, and I am the designer at Orsini's in Martinsburg, West Virginia. We welcome you into our store to show you a complete line of what we do here. We design your cabinetry, quartz countertops, granite countertops, hardware, anything for the full remodel of your kitchen and your home needs. We also do bathrooms, and we have flooring available too. We make sure that your project with Orsini's is the best in the market. Welcome to Orsini's. Orsini's.com. Welcome back as Terwilliger sets the kick off for Martinsburg and his kick will be an onside kick to the far side. It goes 10 yards, but out of bounds, in and out of the hands of Braden Mott. So Bishop Ireton will get the ball with great field position again, and it's still 22-0 Bulldogs, but they had the chance there to get it back. So, so far, the Martinsburg offense has 231 total yards of offense here in this first quarter on just 14 plays. They're averaging 16 and a half yards per play on offense. That is absolutely ridiculous. And now they're waiting to see if there should be a penalty or not as the kickoff went out of bounds. But I thought Mott touched it with his right hand, so it should not be a penalty. It still should be Bishop Ireton ball, but they're yeah. not. There should not be an illegal procedure on Martinsburg. I'm not sure why why there would be, unless it was something other than when they touched the ball that is would bring about a penalty. So first and ten, Bishop Ireton. Cardinals have the ball at its 43-yard line, and there goes your stats, Dylan. Well, yep. Lucky for me, I remember a good bit of them. Let me write them down somewhere else that's taped down. So first and 10 with 424 to go in the first. Diallo in shotgun formation, two receivers to the far side, one in the near. Diallo drops back the pass, and he's sacked by 
number 75 for Martinsburg, E.J. Hendricks. Another sack for the Bulldogs defensive line who has feasted so far in this first quarter. Brings up second down and a loss of, I believe, six on the play. Yeah, I mean, it's just the Bulldogs' defense is so strong up front. It's really tough for anyone to run the ball again. We see the other EPAC teams like Musselman and Jefferson, teams that are in the playoffs in West Virginia, AAA, can't run the ball against Martinsburg. The and shotgun formation. He has Jones to his right, one receiver to the near side, one to the far, and a tight end as well. Bubble screen caught by Jones. Brinkley almost gets to him, but Cam Chalice gets to him first at the 35-yard line. It's where Trey Jones will be stopped to bring up third down. And it's another loss on the play for Bishop Ireton. Looks like your stats are being retrieved as we speak, Dylan, so don't worry. Thank goodness. Worry. My baby boys, I miss my, I miss my stat sheets. <laughs> don't let it happen again. Come home. Diallo gets the snap, dropping back the pass, looks to the near side, rolls out to the left, has nowhere to go, but he breaks through anyhow. He has space on the far side. Herring's going to catch him from behind at the 49, and it looks like it's going to be a horse collar tackle, even though he was stopped right at the yard to gain at Martinsburg's 47-yard line. With the flag, it's enough for a Cardinal first down, and how did Diallo do that? It looked I, like Harden and about five other Martinsburg Bulldogs slippery, were swarming him, and he just ducked and found a hole that didn't look like it was there. That's exactly why this team leans on him so much to run and pass. That's just, man, what a what a play yeah. by Omar Diallo to put the Cardinals in Martinsburg territory. So we're waiting for the officials to get the flag, and it looks like they're not going to call the flag but it's still enough for a Bishop Ireton first down. And we're going to have a timeout called as Coach Wortham Sr. is not happy that the flag was picked up. We're going to take a 60-second break. You're tuned into Martinsburg Bulldog Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Hagerstown Ford continues to be your leader in car sales up and down the I-81 corridor. We will beat any and all competitors' prices. And we've made buying a new car easier than ever with one-day delivery better than Amazon and a return policy better than Walmart. Your satisfaction is our guarantee. If you don't like it, simply return it and we'll come pick it up. No questions asked. Why would you shop anywhere else? At Hagerstown Ford, we take great pride in our community and supporting our local student athletes. That's why Hagerstown Ford is the official car dealership of Shepherd Rams quarterback Tyson Bagent. Our remote buying process has made new car shopping so easy, you'll never even set foot in a dealership. Simply go to HagerstownFord.com and click on the car you want to buy it, or use the Axle Auto app. It's that easy. You can order your new car on any device. Go to HagerstownFord.com and get your new car signed, sealed, and delivered from Hagerstown Ford. Back to Francis Fannin Field in Alexandria, Virginia, home of the Bishop Ireton Cardinals as your Martinsburg Bulldogs lead Bishop Ireton 22 to nothing with 2 minutes 55 seconds to go in the first quarter. It is first and 10 for Bishop Ireton. Ball on Martinsburg's 47-yard line. As the ball spotted on that far side hash. It is two receivers to the near side and two more to the far side for Omar Diallo, the quarterback of the Cardinals, with his running back Trey Jones lined up to his right. Matt Foley has his hand on the ball, ready to snap. Martinsburg sends pressure. Snap back to Diallo, and Rashad Reed just wraps him up and throws him to the turf for the sack. Diallo didn't even have time to think about that one before Rashad Reed met him in the backfield. No, a loss nasty. of seven on the play. I believe that's five and a half sacks on the year now for Rashad Reed, bringing him into the lead, passing uh, Xerxes Yancey, who has five so far this year. Second down and 17 ball on Bishop Ireton's 45-yard line. For those, wonder Cardinals. for those wondering at home, I did get my Martinsburg stat sheet back. It came home. So we will have first half stats as best as we can. Yes. At halftime. They need to keep track of so far. Two receivers to each side for Diallo. Jones to his right. Shotgun formation. Diallo 
immediately rolls out to his right looking downfield. Brinkley almost has him, but he's going to be pushed out of bounds on the near sideline by Cam Shallis. Across the 50, we'll see where they spot him out. And they're going to say he stepped out actually just before the 50-yard line at the Cardinals' 49-yard line. Give him about four yards there. For Bishop Ireton with a minute 58 to go in the first quarter of play. It's Martinsburg on top, 22-0. Again, third and long is exactly where you want any team when you're on defense. But this team especially when so much of their offense is running the ball. Two receivers near side, one to the far side. Diallo gets a snap from Foley, drops back to pass, steps up. Somehow evades a sack, but immediately, as I say, that is wrapped up by Dominic Brinkley at the 40-yard line, and he's there to get the sack to bring up fourth down. Martinsburg has sent the pressure all afternoon, and it's really paid off, but there's a flag, it looks like, on the far side at the 36-yard line, it uh, looks like we might have had a holding on a receiver. Holding. Yeah, uh, that's in the spot of defensive holding. Yeah, and it is a defensive holding on that far side. Did not see it until I just glanced up at to see who was coming from that far sideline for the return. But lo and behold, there is a yellow flag out waiting for me to see it. They're trying to make sure they get things going. Five-yard penalty back to third down. And that'll spot the ball at Martinsburg's 48-yard line for Bishop Ireton's offense. A minute 46 to go in the first. And it's third down and about 10 and a half, 11 yards. Yeah, I mean, it's still third and long in the end. So this offensive line is going to have to hold up again. It's two receivers to each side, but it's now Trey Jones all alone in the backfield. And we'll have another timeout called by Bishop Ireton. 138 to go in the first. It's Martinsburg 22, Bishop Ireton nothing. And I believe that's Cardinals' second timeout, correct? I think you're right, yeah. So they have one timeout remaining. And let's keep it here, Dylan. I'm glad you kept it here because I'm looking down. I'm, I was looking at that play. There was only 12 guys. There was only 10 guys out there for, for Bishop Ireton. They thought it was fourth down. The reason there was only 10, Omar Diallo is sitting on the bench right now down on uh, the near side here on the left side. I think a little shaken up after that third down sack. So... That's why Trey Jones was out there kind of confused about what was going on. I think he was ready to just take a direct snap and do what he had to do. But they call a timeout partially because their quarterback just wasn't out on the field. And I don't think anyone really realized it. Yeah, and a backup is now at wide receiver, number seven, Brandon Diggs, the six foot two sophomore. We'll see if he's now the quarterback for Bishop Ireton. He has got some reps at the varsity level. But with Omar Diallo, who has had a few pretty amazing plays so far in this first quarter, bad things have already gone to worse for the Cardinals. Right. Like we've, we've, like we've been saying, Diallo has been the engine of this Cardinals offense. And it is Diggs in at quarterback with Jones to his right in shotgun formation. Two receivers to the far side, two more to the near side. Third down and 11. Ball at the 48-yard line of Martinsburg. Diggs, shift Jones over to his left, gets a snap, drops back, looking to pass as a guy, and it's over the head and incomplete as the pass was intended for Aaron Rock, but another flag thrown on the play, and it's against Bishop Ireton, and it looks like Martinsburg's going to just decline the holding penalty to bring up fourth down. Yeah, it's third and long, a hold, I mean, uh, it's going to get to the point where... The Cardinals have to do a lot of holding, probably, to keep to keep this Bulldogs defensive front from getting back to the quarterback. So fourth down and 11, and the punt unit for Bishop Ireton will make its way out onto the field. Jack Wheeler on to punt. As he's lined up at the 39-yard line of the Cardinals. Back to return is Jameer Hunter standing on the 20 of Martinsburg. Low snap, it rolls to Wheeler, and the punt is blocked. Recovered by Dominic Brinkley. 
for Martinsburg, who has the first down at the 35-yard line of Bishop Ireton. Xerxes Yancey got the block, and it looks like he might be a little shaken up as well, grabbing his right side, limping off the field as well. Hopefully he's okay, but it's first and 10 Bulldogs with 125 to go as they lead 22-0 over the Cardinals. Yeah, that'll be something to watch out for. I mean, he's walking off the field, so hopefully he just maybe got a little bit of a stinger there in the side. I'm hoping he just didn't get kicked when he blocked it. Right. He might have. He might have. First and 10, Martinsburg. Xavion Kendall in it running back to the right side of Bajent. Bajent gets the snap. It's a jet sweep to the far side. Goes into the gut of Clement. Clement on that far side. Makes his way out across and stops. Past the 30. Mark him at the 26-yard line. The bring up, I believe, a Martinsburg first down, or well, they say it's second and inches. Second and inches. Yeah, I gave him about nine yards there. Good tough block. to tell. I'm not used to the chains being on the home side of the field instead of the visitor side. That's a good point. Bajan drops back the pass. Wide open receiver on the far side. Caught. Touchdown, Martinsburg. 50 seconds to go. It's now 28 0 Bulldogs. Buzz Dover had space and floating it into the air was Bajant for his second touchdown pass of the afternoon. They're just running a lot of switch verticals on this team down the field, getting some of those, uh, some of that action where one guy's staying back, acting like he's going to uh, try to catch a screen. But that time, Dover just got in the middle of the defense there. And there go another good throw by Ezra Bajan. Martinsburg going for two as everybody rushes up. Ball on the three, it's Clement under center. Hands it off to Grantham, and Grantham's going to easily go into the end zone for the two-point conversion to make it Martinsburg 30, Bishop Ireton nothing. We'll take a 60-second break with 50.4 seconds to go in the first. You're tuned into Martinsburg Bulldog Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Hello, this is Mark Sutton of the Sutton & Janelle Law Firm. The right attorney can make all the difference in your case. That's why you should call Sutton & Janelle. We have been serving clients in West Virginia and Maryland since 1999 in the areas of family law, DUI, criminal defense, and personal injury. Sutton & Janelle works hard to obtain a favorable outcome for you at a reasonable rate with affordable payment options. Sutton & Janelle values your rights and is passionate about your success. Contact us today at suttonandjanelle.com. I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. Welcome back. First quarter, 50.4 seconds to go in the first. It is Martinsburg in the lead. It should be 30 to nothing, but the scoreboard says 29 nothing. But we did have the two-point conversion, so it's 30 to nothing, Martinsburg. Terwilliger on to kick off, and he kicks it deep high end over end. It's going to go into the back of the end zone for a touchback, so it'll be first and 10 Bishop Ireton from the 20-yard line. Yeah, it's just been a dominant performance right now for the Bulldogs. Uh, Ezra Bajan's only seven for seven, but he's closing in on a hundred and he's uh, closing in on two hundred yards passing already. That last throw to Buzz Dover was his thirty-first touchdown pass of the year. That first one of the game to uh, AJ Harrison being his thirtieth on the season. So it's Diggs still in at quarterback is Omar Diallo is still on the bench on the near sideline. Brandon Diggs will have Trey Jones lined up to his right side and two receivers to each side. With five seconds to go on the play clock, Diggs sends a man in motion from left to right, and a whistle blows as looks like there's a false start penalty against Bishop Ireton. So that's going to start him off with a five-yard penalty and make it first and 15 from that 15-yard line. I'm looking down on the bench. I'm trying to figure out what sort of injury is uh, Diallo is being treated for. My current hypothesis is a concussion, like a potential concussion. But I'm not going to speculate further than that until 
figure something out for sure. Martinsburg on top, 30 to nothing. 50 seconds to go in the first quarter. Brandon Diggs in shotgun formation. Sends a man in motion. Hands it off to Jones. And Jones immediately met by Harden and Reed. And it'll be a loss of one on the play to make it second down and 16. 35 seconds to go. The play clock's at 36. So we'll see if Bishop Ireton decides to take a play or just let it go out and finally be the end of the first quarter. And It looks like they're going to let it run. It does as they slowly make their way to the near side. And there's a second difference between the game clock and the play clock. It will be Martinsburg on top at the end of the first quarter, 30 to nothing over Bishop Ireton as we wait for it to officially hit zeros before we take our break. Both teams will head to the sideline, and we will take that 60-second break and then be back for the second quarter of play. You're tuned into Martinsburg Bulldog Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. <laughs> here again three times in the past two days. You're where? At Bill Jewelers. Look. Can mom hear you? No, she's in a diamond coma. Get her the pendant or I will. Hey, that's my credit card. What? Can't hear you, Dad. You're breaking up. It's going to take more than a crying baby to wake her out of this diamond coma. You're going to need a mega dose of jewelry from Bechtel Jewelers. Welcome you back to a very windy Alexandria, Virginia. Very windy. As things are flying everywhere from on top of the press box, and we apologize for those below because of that. But it's Martinsburg 30, Bishop Ireton nothing, and it is second down and 16 for the Cardinals. Ball on Bishop Ireton's 14-yard line. Brandon Diggs in at quarterback as Omar Diallo is out with a injury. Diggs in shotgun formation, gets the snap, and it's a halfback toss to the near side to Jones, and he's oh. immediately drilled by Jimmy Harden, and it's another loss on the play, a loss of one to bring up third down and 13. So it Man. might have been two yards that I think they backed him up. Yeah, that was a hard hit there. I mean, that's just how the entire game has gone for Ireton. That's an early nominee for our Cody's body shop collision of the game. Absolutely. It's just been, this is a recipe for disaster when it comes to Ironton's offensive game plan and the strength of this Martinsburg run defense. So third down, two receivers to the near side, two more to the far side for Brandon Diggs. He sends a man in motion from right to left and lines him up in the slot. That's Prosper. But now he sends over from left to right in Tomboy. It's a quarterback keeper by Diggs, and he spun around and dropped just shy of the 15-yard line to bring up fourth down. As it looks like they mark him at the 13, so right to the original line of scrimmage. And it will be a fourth down, and the punt unit will come out for the Cardinals with 10.40 to go in the second quarter. It's Martinsburg 30. Bishop Ireton, nothing. It's a tough situation for Ireton because, like we've been saying, Diallo is such a big part of the offense that him going down can completely throw off what you want to do. Back to punt. It's Jack Wheeler, and we saw his punt blocked last time. Snap, though, gets to him, but it's shanked to the near side. Going to be caught by an assistant coach, and we'll say where it goes out as we have a scuffle on the far side as Xerxes Yancey with some extracurriculars being pushed back out of the back of the end zone by Ryan Curry, but no penalty. And they're going to say the ball went out at the 24-yard line. So only a 10-yard punt in total will make it a first down Bulldogs inside Bishop Cardinal territory already. 
Make it the 25, so 11 yards. Yeah. It would have been, t I mean, a good punt would have gotten that back to Jameer Hunter lined up at about the 40, 45. So, it, I mean, who knows? It, it might be better off that way. Clement in at quarterback. He gets the snap, dropping back the pass. Looks to Dover on the far side. Dover catches it. Wide receiver screen, and nobody's getting him into the end zone on the far side. Touchdown, Martinsburg. It's now 36-0 with 10.07 to go in the second. That's the second touchdown catch of the afternoon for Buzz Dover and the first touchdown pass for Murphy Clement. Yeah, I think that you could tell that Dover actually went back a couple more yards than usual on that screen pass. I think they realize if you give him a little more space when he catches it that he can use his speed to get out in front, and you got guys like Cam Shallis out yeah, not as only blockers. That, he had to get more time for the blockers, I agree. Right, and the, both of those things contributed to that being having more success than some of the other screen passes they've had so far today. And Dover's just such a good athlete with, in straight line and be able to, to make guys miss. That, that was a pretty easy touchdown there. So we wait for everybody to get ready for the extra point. It looks like we had a flag. So the touchdown still stands. After the play, it's an unsportsmanlike conduct against Martinsburg. And they will elect to take it on the... Terliger will have a very long extra point now that he see, has to try to make. You can see Coach Sherman throwing his arms up. They don't really seem to know what the unsportsmanlike conduct was. So I'm sure they'll have to get that clarified, figure out what happened. And now it looks like they're going to decide to just take it during the kickoff as they yeah. move the ball back to the three-yard line instead of the 18-yard line. So it will be a typical extra point. Yeah, I, I can't blame them there. Terwilliger on to attempt the PAT. Pearson on to hold. So we wait for the snap. It's a low roller, but Pearson's able to recover it. The kick is up. And good from Terwilliger to make it Martinsburg 37, Bishop Ireton nothing with 10.07 to go in the second quarter. We're back in 60 seconds on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. What came first, the chicken or the egg? No matter what you think, you can have it either way. Rock's new bagel croissant and chicken waffle breakfast sandwiches are made fresh every morning. Rock's local market. Rise and shine. You'll be late for work. Good morning, sleepyhead. Have a good one. Rock's new bagel croissant and chicken waffle breakfast sandwiches are made fresh every morning. Rock's local market. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm in new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs. <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you can be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. Welcome back to Francis Fannin Field. 10.07 to go in the second quarter. It's Martinsburg on top of Bishop Ireton. 37 to nothing as they just assess the 15-yard penalty. So it'll be Twerliger to kick off. He lines it up at the near hash mark on the 25-yard line instead of the 40-yard line. Terwilliger makes sure both his sides are set. And he decides to kick it deep, end over end. And back to catch it to Tomboy at the 15-yard line. Goes in Tomboy on the far side out across the 30. Breaks through Harrison, pushed out of bounds by Kidrick. But we have a flag thrown at the near side. And we'll see who's it against. It looks like it's an illegal block in the back against Bishop Ireton to back him up. Yeah, it was the far side. It was the official away from the play that saw that from behind. So it might not even have been a block that was necessary for that return to get as far as it did. So now we'll wait for where they spot the ball for the first and ten, Bishop Ireton. It's Brandon Diggs still in at quarterback as Omar Diallo still on the near sideline bench with his helmet off. 
It looks like they'll say that the penalty will push the Cardinals back to the 30-yard line to bring up first and 10 for Bishop Ireton. Now, Colin, I, uh, I was going to say, I think we can make mention here. To, uh, we know there's only, still 10 minutes left in the second quarter, but if this score were to stand, a 35-point lead, there would be a running clock for the entire second half as opposed to just the fourth quarter for West Virginia rules. It looks like Trey Jones will come off the field. Brandon Diggs now confused with the formation in the play. 16 seconds to go on the play clock. Bishop Ireton has one timeout left, and now they're going to bring They only have four linemen on the field. Number 58, Ryan Curry. Five seconds left on the play clock. It's three receivers to the far side, one to the near. Diggs gets the snap off in time. It's a quarterback keeper to the near side. And setting the edge is Herring. And immediately helping Herring out was Hendricks as well as Fleming. Two-yard gain will bring up second and eight for Bishop Ireton. Yeah, Diggs is doing his best back there to fill in for Diallo, who is uh, still on the bench here on the side. I said he's had a trainer right by his side sitting next to him to, uh, on the bench nearly the entire time he's been out. Diggs has trips to the far side, one receiver to the near side, second and eight at the 31-yard line for Bishop Ireton. Diggs fakes the handoff. It's a read option. Great job by Diggs. Goes to the far side out across the 35, and Hunter will wrap him up. I'll say at that 35, so a four-yard gain will make it third down and five for the Cardinals. Great read by yeah, there Brandon was... Diggs to, instead of handing it off to Jones, keep it himself. Yeah, that's the right thing to do there. They purposely don't block the defensive end on that side, and they let him decide, who's he, is he crashing it on the running back? Then he'll take it out himself. That's what happened there. And be able to get himself a good gain. Third down and four, as they say, the ball was extended to the 36, not the 35, for Bishop Ireton. Cover zero as Martinsburg looks to send the pressure against Brandon Diggs. Diggs drops back the pass, and it's a curl route that's caught right at the 40-yard line, and pushing forward for the first down is Cameron Prosper. First and 10, Bishop Ireton, as they get the ball to the 43-yard line with 8.23 to go in the second. Is that their first first down, Colin? I think it's their second at most. Second, I believe. Yeah. Because they it's had been their the first down in a while from Diallo. You're right, you're right. In the first quarter. Well, that, I believe, is the second one. It is 37-0 Martinsburg on top of Bishop Ireton. First and 10 for the Cardinals. Diggs with Jones to his left, has trips to the far side, one receiver to the near side. Diggs rolls out to the near side. It looks like he's going to keep it himself all the way as four Martinsburg Bulldogs chase him down, and Jimmy Harden will get some help from Koi Fagan to make the tackle. Gain of maybe half a yard at best. Looks like they're going to say no yards gain, so it's second down and ten. And it looked like E.J. Hendricks was slow to get up, and he'll now run to the far sideline. So Xerxes Yancey checks back in for him on that defensive line of Yancey, Fleming, and Reed. Second down and 10, 7.14 to go in the second. Two running backs to the left and right of Diggs. Diggs looks to the near side, immediately throws it, caught by Jones, but Jones met in the backfield by Fagan for the loss bring up third down. Now it looks like they might actually say it fell incomplete. Really? Gonna wait and see. Well, for their sake, they better hope because that was a loss of about seven yards. It's a big difference for a third down. But I thought he had it in his lap. They're gonna run the and clock, they are so yeah. Say. Okay. I saw the white hat initially go in motion for the incomplete pass. But the line judge on the near side is going to say it was caught by Trey Jones. So it's now a third down, ball on the 36-yard line. Second quarter of play between Bishop Ireton and Martinsburg. Two receivers to each side for Diggs. Jones lined up to his right. Diggs in shotgun formation, and the horn goes off for a delay of game against Bishop Ireton to back him up another five yards. I mean, they're having a tough enough time as it is trying to move the ball on their own. 
uh, just against the Martinsburg defense, but when you start playing against yourself and making your own self-inflicted errors, it's hard to get anything moving. Ball now on the 31-yard line for the Cardinals. Two receivers to each side for Brandon Diggs. Trey Jones lined up to his right at running back. Diggs claps, recovers the snap, chucks it deep to the far side over the head of the intended receiver, Nick Malowski. Looked like he wasn't ready for it as it falls incomplete. They bring up fourth down, and the punter, Jack Wheeler, will make his way back out onto the field for Bishop Ireton. Yep, I mean, Ireton... Man, they're, they're trying their best out here. They really are. It's just that Martinsburg has so much firepower up front with that defensive line that gets pressure on the quarterback, gets pr really disrupts the run game, and then you have guys like Jameer Hunter just really shutting down the wide receivers too. Hunter back to return this punt from Wheeler. And Wheeler short punt to the near sideline, bouncing and going out of bounds at the 50-yard line, and they'll say it went at the 49 or 48 of Bishop Ireton, so that's where it will be a first and 10 make it the 48 for the Bulldogs as Ezra Bajant, Martinsburg's offense, makes its way back out onto the field from the far side as they lead 37-0 over Bishop Ireton in the second quarter. It's been pretty short work for the Bulldogs' offense so far. I mean, still Ezra Bajant, close to 200 yards and two touchdowns, but he's only thrown the ball seven times. Bajant shotgun formation as Kendall do his right. Two receivers to each side of the formation. Bajant drops back the pass, looking downfield, takes a shot. Jameer Hunter in and out of his hands and incomplete as a flag thrown at the line of scrimmage. Hunter wanting one in the... I thought the corner got there early. I thought the corner got there early. But in to break it up was a tomboy. It sounds like... It will be a holding penalty against Martinsburg. And it looks like it's against Rashad Reed. Yeah, I definitely thought that number 15 for the Cardinals there got uh, in Tomboy. I think he got to Hunter just a half second earlier. Wasn't really turned to the, towards the ball. So I'm shocked that there wasn't a defensive pass interference for offsetting penalties there. Ball at the 38-yard line for the first down for Martinsburg. Two receivers to each side for Bajant. High snap, play action pass. The far side caught by Dover. Dover slips through one tackle, but immediately after he slips through it, the tackler grabs his shoe and brings him down. And it's Attilis in to make the tackle to bring up second down and long after a four-yard gain for Martinsburg. And Dover's really dangerous. And it's not just the like, speed and shiftiness, but it's also strength for him to break through tackles. Bajan takes the snap, dropping back, looking to pass, steps up. as a receiver open in the middle of the field. It's Blackwood. He catches it, breaks through a tackle, but gets tripped up out across the 20, put him at the 17-yard line, first down Martinsburg. Just open down the seam there. They are able to find the weak spots in this this Bishop Ironton defense. Just no one down the seams there. Martinsburg going hurry up offense. Bajan shotgun formation. Xavier Kendall to his left. Two receivers to each side. A late whistle on that far side. Trying to make sure that the chains are ready to go. As they finally are. Bajan gets the snap. Fakes the pass. Looks for Pearson. Pearson unable to bring that one in. Brings up second and ten as it looked like it was going to be that wide receiver screen to the far side, but then Pearson slipped underneath. But he was just unable to bring it in with that left hand. It finally ended the perfect day for Ezra Bajan. Any other incompletions he's had has come back with, penalty, with penalties. Bajan, play action pass, and it's deflected, intercepted by Jones. And Bishop Ireton will get the ball back as Amandi Jones deflected that pass. It went off a helmet of one of his teammates and right back into his arms. So first and ten Cardinals from the 24-yard line of Bishop Ireton. That was just unlucky there. Because uh, uh, Bajan gets the ball tipped up in the uh, tipped as he throws it. It hits off of one of his offensive linemen and pops up in the air, and then you have Amani James there to able to catch the ball and make the interception after Bajan's first nine passes were all complete. 
My apologies there. You're correct, Dylan. It is James, not Jones. I had Trey Jones still on my mind. So it's Brandon Tiggs in at quarterback with Trey Jones. Shotgun formation. Ten seconds to go on the play clock as Bishop Ireton still trying to set up its formation. They have two receivers to each side, still trying to get set. Three seconds to go on the play clock. The snap off, and it goes into the hands of Jones. And I don't even think Diggs ever really had to make the catch on the snap to hand it off to Jones. But Jones it was, kinda, it was almost middle. snapped right to Jones, who kind of just kind of bobbled it for half a second and just kind of let it fall into Jones' lap there. He'll make his way to the 25-yard line. A gain of one makes it second and nine. So as the clock winds down here, again, if the score stands, according to the rules here in Virginia, a 35-point lead leads to a running clock for the entire second half and not just the fourth yeah, quarter like in West Virginia. 37 nothing Martinsburg with 4.10 to go in the second. The snap goes by Diggs, and he will have to fall and roll on top of it, and he'll be said that he went down at the 8-yard line. Make it the, They're giving him the 10. I don't know if he fully had possession at the 10 while he was still rolling. Well, they'll say he did. They'll give it to it's him. It's still a loss on the play. And that makes it third and very long for Bishop Ireton. So, again, those snaps from the center, uh, that's another, that's the second play in a row there that's been kind of been off to the right of the quarterback. That time there was no running back to his right side to kind of try to catch that himself. But it was a little more off target than that first one. Three and a half to go in the second. Brandon Diggs in shotgun formation. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. And the horn goes off for a delay of game against Bishop Byerton. Back him up from the 10 to the 5-yard line. And Diggs confused with why the play clock was already rolling. And the coach is not happy as well. Yeah, that seems a little, a little early for that. Now, we already have one safety in this game. And you're getting into territory where you could potentially get a second one. Diggs in shotgun formation. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Diggs take the snap. Get out of the end and zone. And he's right on the goal line. Will they say I think that's a safety. that he was in, or will they say he's at the, like, inch line? And I think they do. So it's not a safety. Martinsburg wanted the safety. That's Maybe they'll get it with it a punt. It's about as, uh, yeah, the but that is as close well. as it gets. As It's on the half-yard line for the fourth down. That's about it. That's as close as it gets. I've, uh, Diggs there in that situation has to be aware. I, mean, I know he's trying to let his blockers develop, but you're in the end zone as a quarterback, as a runner. You have to get out of the end zone as quickly as possible. Fourth down, and Jack Wheeler lined up in the very back of his own end zone as the whistle blows our head official will make his way out trying to point to the clock, which I don't think was ever stopped as it's at 2.27 to go in this second quarter. It's Martinsburg 37, Bishop Ireton nothing. Jameer Hunter back to return, and he's lined up at the 30-yard line of Bishop Ireton. He's standing on the numbers because that's where every punt has gone towards so far. That he is kind true. of punted, uh, punted it off to the left. Wheeler ready to punt. Martinsburg, it looks like, ready to try to block it. And it's a short kick, and Hunter was ready for it. He's going to run to the far side. Has a few blockers in front of him, slips through one tackle. And, yes, you are correct, Dylan. He makes his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Martinsburg. 2.12 to go. It is now Martinsburg 43, Bishop Ireton nothing. But that one, for a brief second, almost looked like you were going to be wrong, Dylan. I was, I was crossing my fingers here, but when you get uh, Jameer Hunter the ball with about 20 yards of space between uh, and uh, him and the nearest defender and only 30 yards to get to the end zone, I, that's just in, in, incredible stuff there for his sixth special teams touchdown of the season. That and would make it his fourth punt return one then as he's had two kickoff returns. Yep. It's just, it's just incredible. Anytime he has the ball in his hands. It's a threat to go to the end zone. 25 yards at, uh, he's averaging every time he touches the ball. It looks like we might have had a penalty. Did not see what it was, but we'll still have the extra point for Brett Terwilliger. And after that, we'll give you our second quarter sponsors. So Terwilliger on to attempt the extra point. Pearson on to hold. Snap. 
Looks good. The kick is up from Terwilliger and right down the middle and into the trees, and good. So 2.12 to go. It's now Martinsburg 44, Bishop Ireton nothing. And let's get the second quarter sponsors in as we're presented on TV10 by the Skinner Law Firm. Injury and consumer rights lawyers, phone 304-245-6613 or go to skinnerfirm.com, as well as Kelly Allstate Insurance for all of your insurance needs. Call Gary Kelly at 304-263-4596 or stop by 724 Lakeview Drive in Martinsburg. As I believe up in Pennsylvania, we might have had kickoff already sure have. for the Shepherd offense who's on the field, and we'll keep you as updated as we possibly can with that one as Tyson Bajant looking to break Jimmy to Willigers NCAA Division II passing touchdown record against East Stroudsburg, who is coached by the guy that I just mentioned, Jimmy to Williger. So we'll do our best to keep you updated with that Shepherd Rams game, as unfortunately we obviously don't have it for you as we're here for Martinsburg. We can only be in one place at one time, you know? And, of course, we're Martinsburg. And it looks like we have figured out the penalty that we had during the touchdown. It was another unsportsmanlike penalty against Martinsburg. So, to Williger to kick off again from the 25 yard line this afternoon. I believe for the second time. Yeah, you're right. So he sets his green tee down on the near hash mark, the 25-yard line. He has six guys to the far side, four to the near side, and it looks like Jimmy Harden, one of the six from the far side, will now make his way to the near side and then go back to the far side. And he changed his mind. Just trying to confuse Bishop Ireton as much as possible as the ball falls off the tee. Oh, they might, so, I, I thought maybe he was going to come up to hold the ball on the tee with how much wind we've had today. We have seen it fall a few times, but it's on it. And to Williger, kick a short end over end kick at the 50, and it's fair caught at the 46-yard line on the far side by Cameron Prosper. So it's a first and 10 Bishop Ireton. At the 46 of the Cardinals with 2.12 to go in the second quarter. As Brandon Diggs, the Cardinals offense, makes its way onto the field. Diggs looking to the near side for the play call now as the whistle blows. And we still have another lineman that has to go back out onto the field as, again, Bishop Ireton only had four. Two yeah, receivers to I, each I don't know. side. I don't know how that keeps happening. Diggs will send one now to the near side. So it's three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Ten seconds left on the play clock. 2.12 to go on the game clock in this second quarter. Diggs sends a man in motion from left to right. It's in Tomboy. So now he has two receivers to each side again. And before he gets the snap off, we have a flag. It's another delay of game. Oh, I'm, I, don't, I don't understand how this happens so many times. It's definitely frustrating, especially for Bishop Ireton. And that it seems like they're getting even the plays before in. the first play. It seems like they're getting the plays in. I, I mean, you got the guy, you, you got, got offensive our, lineman you running You got to remember, on. you also got the backup quarterback out there, Dylan. Right, yeah. I mean, you got offensive linemen running on the field late. Brandon Diggs drops back the pass, looking to the near side, steps up and is sacked by Dominic Brinkley, Wes Hancock, and Eric King. That'll bring up second down with two minutes to go in the second. It's Martinsburg 44, Bishop Ireton nothing. It'll be a loss of five on the play. Make it second and 15. Or am I miscounting? I'm way off, Dylan. Uh, it looks like it's about 20, 21. So it was 10. I, I only counted half of what I needed to count. My apologies. So second and 20. Diggs sends a man in motion from the near side to the far side, dropping back the pass, looking for a man open in the middle, but it's short and incomplete intended for number 22, Aaron Rock. It almost went right into the gut, a buzzed over. Right, yeah, that was close to being, it looked like there was about you know, three or four different Bulldogs there that were closest to the ball compared to anyone on the Bishop Ironton. Third down and 20 for Bishop Ireton. Ball at the 36-yard line of the Cardinals. 
Two running backs in the backfield on the left and right side, Brandon Diggs. He has two receivers to the far side, one to the near side coming out all the way to the numbers, covered by Dover. High snap, Diggs able to recover, looking in the middle of the field. AJ, or excuse me, Jameer Hunter picks it off. He snatched it right out of the hands of Cameron Prosper for his second interception of the day, and with a minute 21 to go in the second, it's first and 10 Bulldogs on Martinsburg's 45-yard line. He's been on every every sort of sense of the word. He's already, That's his second interception of the day, and that's seven interceptions that he has on the season. 44 nothing, Martinsburg on top. The agent and the offense out on the field. First and 10, Martinsburg at the 45. Two receivers to each side for Bajant. Kendall in at running back to his left. Bajant. Gets the snap, dropping back the pass, looking on the far side as a man open underneath. It's Jameer Hunter. Hunter catches it and will be out across the 40 on the near side. Hash marks and tackled for a first down Bulldogs. And the clock will stop for the first down as Martinsburg hurries up and waits for the ball to be spotted. Minute 12 left. Two receivers to each side for Bajant. One minute to go. Bajant. Drops back the pass, pump fakes, sees Clement open underneath. Clement goes up the middle, out across the 30, almost to the 25. They'll say he was stopped at the 27-yard line with 57.8 seconds to go. It's another Martinsburg first down. Let's see if they can add something just a little bit more onto the score right before halftime. Clock starts winding down. Two receivers to each side again for Bajant. Bajant dropping back the pass, looking deep. Has a man open in the middle, it's Clement. Clement breaks through one tackle, and he's going to be stopped just shy of the end zone at the three-yard line, first and goal, Martinsburg, with 44 seconds to go in this second quarter as it looks like they want to punch it into the end zone one more time before halftime. Bajant with Kendall lined up behind him, spikes it down, and that stops the clock with 40 seconds to go to bring up second down. And that spike is only the third in completion of the day for Ezra Bajan. Just two quick passes for Murphy Clement, able to find the soft, uh, open part of this Cardinals defense that they're playing some zone, not really going one-on-one. -on -one. I can't blame them for not trying to play man-to-man -man against these really athletic Martinsburg receivers. Bajan shotgun formation. Kendall to his left, has three receivers to the far side, one to the near. Bajant gets the snap, hands it off. Kendall goes up the middle and into the end zone. Touchdown, Martinsburg. 36.3 seconds to go in the second quarter. It's now Martinsburg 50, Bishop Ireton nothing. It's nice to see Xavion Kendall getting in the end zone before, right before the half. So I think that leaves you enough breathing room to where when you come out in the second half here, quicker with the hook for the starters today compared to recent, uh, you know, other weeks of the season, but you can't blame him with playoffs coming up next week. Terwilliger on to attempt the extra point for Martinsburg to make it 51-0 if he can put it through. Pearson on to hold. Snap back to Pearson. Puts the hold down. The kick is up and good. 36.3 seconds to go in the second. It is now 51-0. Martinsburg over Bishop Ireton. We'll be back in 60 seconds. You're tuned in to Martinsburg Bulldog Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV10. Hello? We're here again three times in the past two days. You're where? Bechtel Jewelers. Look. Can Mom hear you? No, she's in a diamond coma. Get her the pendant or I will. Hey, that's my credit card. What? Can't hear you, Dad. You're breaking up. It's going to take more than a crying baby to wake her out of this diamond coma. You're going to need a mega dose of jewelry from Bechtel Jewelers. Hi, it's Talk Radio WRNR and TV10 Spencer Dupuy. When I got into a car accident and needed to get another vehicle, I wanted to go somewhere I could trust. So I went to the Hefley Motor Company at 993 Hedgesville Road. As a first time car buyer, I really didn't know what to expect. But at Hefley, they treated me like family. Every step in the process was seamless. Not only did they give me a great deal, but they also helped me secure an amazing interest rate. Now I know firsthand why Hefley has such a great reputation in this community. I ride with Hefley Motor Company, so you should too. Welcome back 
to Francis Fannin Field, home of Bishop Ireton, as your Martinsburg Bulldogs lead with 36.3 seconds to go in the second quarter by a score of 51 to nothing as we wait for the kickoff. We had an injured Bishop Ireton Cardinal on the field after the extra point. It was LJ Felipe, but he is up and hopefully okay as he made his way to the near sideline. Torliger will kick off on the near hash mark at the 40-yard line for Martinsburg. And remember, once we hit the half, we will send it down to Spencer Dupuy, who is with Britt Sherman, to get his first half thoughts as the wind continues to blow here in Alexandria, Virginia, and it knocked the ball off the kicking tee of Torliger, so he had to go back and reset it. I'm sure Coach should be pretty happy with the performance here. There's a few things he can clean up here and there. There's uh, more penalties than you would like, but other than that. To Williger's kick, a squib kick going up the middle and bouncing its way in and out of the hands of Ntomboy at the 15. He has to go back to the 10, and that's going to really back things up for Bishop Ireton as Ntomboy is tackled at the 11-yard line for the Cardinals with 30 seconds to go before the halftime break. Yeah, if I were them, I would I would just continue to run the ball, get one play in, see where it gets you, and if it doesn't, you know, put you within scoring range of, in one play, then I'd just take it to the half. Brandon Diggs in at quarterback as Omar Diallo went out earlier this quarter with an injury. He's got in Tomboy to his left, Jones to his right, two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Diggs. I snap, it goes into the hands of Jones, and Jones will be pushed back by the Bulldogs as Eric King was able to bully his blocker back into Jones. And it looks like it'll bring up a second down, and a loss on the play will put the ball at the four-yard line, but I think both teams will be happy to just let the clock wind out and hit halftime. It yeah. is Martinsburg, 51, Bishop Ireton, nothing. As we get ready for Spencer to get a hold of Coach Sherman, who right now is currently walking away from Spencer, but Spencer was able to track him down. So, Spencer, whenever you are ready, get into position with Coach Sherman, and we'll send it down to you now. Oh, hold on, Spencer, as it sounds like our wire might be a little messed up again, so let us try to readjust now, let's see. We're down here with Coach Sherman, and Coach Sherman is a big first half for you guys. Put 51 points on the board. It seemed like all three phases of the game working for you today. Yeah, it really, really have been. A beautiful day. I mean, 70-some degrees in November. You know, just trying to get this last, this last week, this last game, trying to play as best as we can. And, and all three phases are doing really well. I think we scored on every possession except for the one interception. Uh, bounced off a couple people, but uh, just pleased with our effort so far and um, try to get some guys a lot of quality reps in the second half. Getting ready for the playoffs, trying to run that two-minute drill. Yeah, yeah, we did a little clock play work and uh, a couple other things. Had three timeouts, didn't they? You know, just trying to, trying to work the ball down the field as quickly as possible. Something we needed to work on. Okay. In the second half, put the backups in? Yeah, we're going to get a lot of guys playing. Um, you know, hopefully the JV team can score a couple times. We just got some twos that haven't played yet today, so uh, try to get those guys some work. All right, Coach, thanks for the time. Best of luck in the second half. All right, thank you, guys. Back up to you guys. Thank you, Spencer, and apologize for uh, that audio going a little bit in and out, but we're now going to take a two-minute break and then be back for the Mansion Freddie Law Firm halftime show. It is Martinsburg 51, Bishop Ireton nothing. You're tuned in to Martinsburg Bulldog Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. You've been in an accident. A distracted driver put texting over safety. Your injuries, loss of income, and medical bills can last a long time, even a lifetime. Our job is to try and secure justice that will protect you and your family for the rest of your life. Mansion Ferretti, when you need justice. 
with four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states. Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords. Financing from 0%. Parsons' goal of financing for all. And Parsons' famous above market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. Welcome back to Francis Fannin Field as we welcome you in to the Halftime Show brought to you by the Mansion Freddie Law Firm in Martinsburg where it's about seeking justice for you. Go to wvjusticelawyers.com as we've hit halftime between Martinsburg and Bishop Ireton and your Martinsburg Bulldogs lead the Bishop Ireton Cardinals by a score of 51 to nothing. Colin McLaughlin for Talk Radio WR and RNTV10 alongside me is Dylan Bishop, our crew today is Donna Schaffner, our executive producer. Braden Schaffner, our main cameraman. On the sideline, being the cameraman, as well as reporter, is Spencer Dupuy. And back at the studio, who you'll hear from shortly, it's Nick Verzellini. And as I said, 51 nothing. Martinsburg has dominated the Cardinals as expected so far. And let's get you our first half stats, brought to you by Dynamark Atlantic Security, reminding you, don't be a statistic. Protect your family, home, and business with the local alarm professionals at Dynamark Atlantic Security. Call Ben Copenhaver at 304-671-2158. And, Dylan, let's give you the first half stats, but don't let them blow away this time. Yeah, they blew away, but I got them back, and we're good to go here. So uh, Ezra Bajan at halftime, 12 of 15 for 302 yards and two passing touchdowns. Has one interception there. It was a fluky interception, though, so we'll give, we'll give him a break on that one. Only his fifth of the year to go with 31 touchdown passes. Uh, Zion Grantham started off hot early, six carries for 56 yards and two touchdowns, and then really didn't play after that, after those first two drives. And then we had Buzz Dover. He's got four catches for 54 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Murphy Clement, three catches for 87 yards, and then he threw one of those touchdowns to Buzz Dover, 25 yards. That's his only pass of the day so far. And a two-yard touchdown by uh, Zavion Kendall. And then Jameer Hunter, only one catch for 17 yards, but he's added in a punt return for a touchdown and two interceptions back playing corner. So there you go. That's our first half stats as we will now take a two-minute break. And on the other side of that break, you'll hear from Nick Verzellini back at the studio. He'll give you an update about the Shepherd Rams as well as some other scores around Division I college football. It is 51-0 Martinsburg over Bishop Ireton, and you'll hear from Nick after this two-minute break on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Hi, I'm Sally Hardy. I am asking you to re-elect John Hardy to the West Virginia House. John is my husband of 24 years and an amazing dad to our daughters. I am proud of this hardworking man who runs a successful business, gives back to the community, and is our valuable delegate. John Hardy is a man of values with a heart of service, and he cares about moving West Virginia forward. Re-elect my husband, John Hardy. Visit Delegate John Hardy on Facebook. Paid for by Candidate. Let's go! Drink some beers! Mountaineer Grill and Pub! Conveniently located right off 81 at 214 Mid-Atlantic Parkway, Mountaineer Grill and Pub offers many daily specials, including happy hour 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. with $2 domestic bottles and $2.50 domestic drafts. Monday night is trivia night, Thursday night is wing night, and Wednesday and Sunday night is steak night. Let's go! Drink some beers! Mountaineer Grill and Pub! 
At the Berkeley County Health Department, our motto is prevent, promote, protect. Since 1935, our mission has been to provide clinical and environmental services to protect the health of the general public. We're committed to building public health in our community by offering a wide range of services, including blood pressure screening, breast and cervical screening, family planning, counseling, lab testing, and more. We perform health inspections to make sure the restaurants you visit are clean, and we prepare and coordinate plans to respond to all hazards. The Berkeley County Health Department, 122 Waverly Court, Martinsburg. When I was in high school, I was a troubled kid. Hannah Geffert took me into her family and treated me like her son. Today, I'm a U.S. Army veteran, a college graduate, and have a successful job. Hannah Geffert doesn't just talk about caring for children, she does it. She did it for me. Vote to keep Hannah Geffert as your state senator. She will take care of you too. Before the invitations and the dress, the flowers, cake, candles, candles or vows, there, there is an, an answer, answer to a question, question proposed with a ring. ring. Bechtel Jewelers knows that an important part of your wedding happens before the I do's. We're a diamond store with an engagement and bridal jewelry selection that's both exciting and accessible. On the big day, there's everything else and there's the ring. Make sure you get this one right at Bechtel Jewelers in Inwood. With Honda, every summer adventure is the destination. Take your adventures even farther with Honda, America's most fuel-efficient full-line automaker. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 2.9% APR on a 2022 Honda Civic and a 3.9% APR on a 2022 Accord or 2023 HRV. CMA's Honda of Winchester, 3985 Valley Pike. CMA, moving lives forward. See dealer for financing details. Exclude Civic SI based on EPA estimate of MY20 full-line automaker fleet-wide fuel economy 2021 EPA automotive trends report. With Honda. With a 42 nothing win over Hedgesville, or over Hampshire. Jefferson winning 41-17 over Washington. Musselman 69-27 over Parkersburg. And as we mentioned, Martinsburg leading here at the half, 51 to nothing. In college football, Shepard trails on the road at East Strasburg, 7-0. And we will have West Virginia High School football for you, or West Virginia University football for you uh, when the Mountaineers take on Iowa State at 3.30. Um, some other scores right now. Ohio State's tied at 7 with one win Northwestern in the second quarter, so that's interesting. TCU leads Texas Tech 13-10. to UVA over North Carolina right now, 14 to 10 in the second quarter at halftime. Excuse me. Also at halftime, Tulane leads Tulsa 17 to 10. Later on today, the big one on CBS at 3:30, Tennessee, Georgia one versus three. Uh, 
not a whole lot of other good games today. Alabama plays LSU, who is surprisingly number 10 at 6-2, and two, but uh, don't expect that to be super close. Clemson versus Notre Dame today as well. Could be an interesting ball game. That's an unranked fighting Irish team. So really these top four all have some challenges. Well, Bama's six, but they'll probably end up in the top four. Uh, they all have some challenges this week in college football. And Ohio State, who is in the top four, uh, is not a challenging opponent there in Northwestern, but are tied at seven. So we'll take a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll send it back to Dylan and Colin. Apologize again for those technical difficulties. I don't know what exactly was the issue, but um, that's kind of what's going on here at the half. Are you considering selling your home and don't know where to start? Then call Chris Ross and the Milestone Real Estate Group at Keller Williams. A Martinsburg High School graduate, Chris knows the local market and he's proven it as number one real estate team in West Virginia in 2019. Phone Milestone Real Estate Group at Keller Williams at 304-579-7349 or go to callchrisross.com. Let's celebrate your real estate milestone together. You've been in an accident. Why won't the insurance company pay? Because they're trying to save money at your expense. Call Mansion Ferretti for your free consultation. We have the experience to deal with the insurance company and get you the compensation you deserve. Mansion Ferretti, when you need justice. Hello, this is Mark Sutton of the Sutton & Janelle Law Firm. The right attorney can make all the difference in your case. That's why you should call Sutton & Janelle. We have been serving clients in West Virginia and Maryland since 1999 in the areas of family law, DUI, criminal defense, and personal injury. Sutton & Janelle works hard to obtain a favorable outcome for you at a reasonable rate with affordable payment options. Sutton & Janelle values your rights and is passionate about your success. Contact us today at suttonandjanelle.com. Welcome back to Francis Fannin Field at the half. It's Martinsburg 51, Bishop Ireton nothing. Colin McLaughlin alongside me is Dylan Bishop. Our crew's Donna Schaffner, Braden Schaffner, as well as Spencer Dupuy on site. And back at the studio you just heard from, and again, apologize for the technical issues. It's Nick Verzellini. As Bishop Ireton is out onto the field to get its stretches started, for the second half kickoff as Martinsburg is just making its way out from the locker room and walking its way behind that right side end zone to get to the far side sideline. But Dylan, I know you've been trying to stay updated a little bit as well on Shepard. Do we have a closer update than what uh, Nick gave us? Uh, it still looks like it's a 7 nothing for for East Stroudsburg. Uh, just winding down to the very end of the first quarter here. It looks like apparently it's windy over there as well, so that came into play. Jacob Haney, the kicker for Shepard, missed a field goal. Uh, might be having you know a little bit of issues throwing the ball, you know, trying to get towards that that record for Tyson Bajan. East Stroudsburg is actually approaching the red zone right now as the first quarter timer just ran down to zeros. They're at the tw they're almost at the 25 yard line. So we're going to try to keep you as updated as possible in that one because we know, one, we typically cover Shepard and fans want to know how they're doing. But two, Tyson Bajant, the brother of Ezra Bajant and former Martinsburg Bulldog, is hopefully today going to be breaking a few NCAA Division II records. And 
even if he doesn't do that, the most important thing is getting the win to keep the undefeated season alive and hopefully keep that number one spot in Super Region 1 come playoffs in a few weeks. Right. If they're able to get that, they'll get a first-round bye in the first round of Division 2 regional tournament there that will lead to, of course, if they win the regional tournament, you're in the final four of the national tournament there. So hopefully they're able to come back, get a stop on defense, and uh, get things going in the last three quarters of the game. So we get ready for the second half kickoff, and your second half kickoff is brought to you by Mountaineer Grill and Pub, located at 214 Mid-Atlantic Parkway in Martinsburg. And during the first half, it was Bishop Ireton that won the coin toss and elected to defer to the second half, so they will receive this opening half kickoff down 51 nothing to Martinsburg as Martinsburg looking to improve to 8-2 and two to end the regular season and be that third seed in the AAA playoffs that start next week, which means that next week they would play against the Morgantown Mohegans to start the search for the 10th state championship for Martinsburg Bulldog history. Yeah, I think they have a really good chance to do it this year. I think that even the teams that are going to be ranked ahead of them in the playoffs that might get you know a, a home field advantage all the way through teams like Huntington and Parkersburg South you know I, th- I think Martinsburg has shown that when it comes to teams inside the state of West Virginia they've had a, a lot easier time with them than some of those other teams had of course we m- you mentioned that their only two losses on the season have come to teams that aren't from the state of West Virginia of course, that ended up being you know, Riverside in Ohio and Highland Springs in Virginia, two really good teams in those two states. So they put, like we said, they put those teams on the schedule to test themselves, and they didn't come up uh, with the wins in those. And it, you know, the result is you'll probably have a road game in the state semifinals, you know, barring any upsets. But it's a risk you take, and you're willing to go on the road. They're on the road right here, and they're up 51 to nothing. It's true as Brett Terwilliger on to kick off for Martinsburg. It is Tomboy and Jones back to return for the Cardinals. And just want to remind everyone, since we're in Alexandria, Virginia, that the mercy rule is different here compared to West Virginia. The mercy rule will be in effect right now as it is a running clock if it's 35 points or more for the lead for the entire second half and not just the fourth quarter like it is in West Virginia as I was saying that to get ready for the kick, but the Blew off the tee again. ball falls off the tee again for Torwilliger, so he has to now reset before we can get ready for the third quarter. It really has been some crazy wind out here. We hadn't had the stat, the stat sheet flow away, fly away from up on the roof here, the screen on our camera. We ended up getting all that back. So that's end good. over end kick that goes deep into the hands of Trey Jones on the far side. He catches it at the five yard line, cuts towards up the middle of the field, but it's going to be tackled at the 16 yard line. So it's a first and 10 Cardinals from there. We do have an update on Shepard. It's not a good one, though. It's 14 0 East Stroudsburg. And that is surprising for your number three team in NCAA Division II football. Down two touchdowns. Yeah, the PSAC championship next week is a potential uh, trap game there. So, see if they can come back. Brandon Diggs in at quarterback still for Bishop Byerton as the starting quarterback, Omar Diallo, went out last quarter with an injury. Diggs sends a man in motion. It's a read option. Jukes past one tackler. And we'll have a flag as it looked like Dominic Brinkley might have grabbed the face mask of Diggs. As in to make the tackle was Brinkley and Fleming. Yeah, they'll have the discussion here. See if, which way the ball moves. Uh, two, two referees saw that one. Yeah. You could clearly tell from up here as well as it is that face mask penalty against Brinkley to help out Bishop Ireton's offense and spot the ball. At the Cardinals 31 yard line to make it first and 10, Bishop Ireton. And if you're the Cardinals, obviously you just want to get some positive momentum going into next year. Just end the season on a good note. 
Obviously, you're not expecting a, a comeback here, but you just do what you can. Leave this game having a little bit of positivity. Three receivers to the far side of Diggs, one to the near side. Diggs, halfback toss to Trey Jones. Jones going to the far side, lowers his head to try to pick up a few more yards as he's tackled by Dover. It's a three-yard gain on the play to bring up second down and seven with under ten minutes to go in the winding clock third quarter play. It's still, you know, you got a couple yards there, but not a whole lot. It doesn't put you in a tough situation. Usually with, with the uh, statistic they would consider success rate, you want 50% of the yards that you need on first down, 75% of what you need on second, and 100% of what you need on third. It's your higher 10 sets. Two receivers to each side. Diggs loses the snap, tries to fall on top of it, but nobody does, and finally a Bulldog does. So it'll be Martinsburg ball. Dominic Brinkley recovers the botched snap. First and ten, Martinsburg at the 24-yard line of Bishop Ireton. Well, funny enough, Dominic Brinkley kind of fumbled around with it, dove on it, didn't quite get it at first. Cam Shallis was about to come in there and pick the ball up on his feet and probably run that into the end zone. But then Brinkley took it from him right before he could get there. So I think Shallis might be kicking, kicking himself a little bit and... A little frustrated that Brinkley actually picked up the fumble before he could. And at quarterback to start off, the first driver of the third quarter for Martinsburg is number three, Coy Fagan, the sophomore quarterback. It's the JV starter, two receivers to each side of Fagan, and we get a false start penalty against Martinsburg to back him up five yards to start off the first drive of this third quarter. Yeah, you're seeing some backup guys in. In some spots, you got Will Bass in at center. See Ladanian Weller in at right guard. But you got all the first string receivers out there still. You do. I kind of like this. And Musgrove's see, out there too. Let's see if Fagan can get some work with the first string running, wide receiver. Fagan, receivers. quarterback keeper. He goes up the middle, splits past one tackler, stiff arms another one to the far side and into the end zone. Touchdown, Martinsburg. 7.55 to go in the third quarter. It's now Bulldogs 57. Bishop Ireton, nothing. And Dylan, you said, let's see what Fagan can do, and he did it. Touchdown. Yeah, I was looking one to play. See, I was looking to see how he went, might throw the ball with the with the number one receivers out there, but then he, he just decided he could do all the work himself. That was a really good play there, making guys miss. I mean, that's what makes, makes you uh, positive about the future there, the future after uh, Ezra Bajan. To Williger on to attempt the extra point. Low snap. Pearson's able to get it. The kick is up and into the trees and good to make it 58 0. Martinsburg. We'll take a one minute break and then be back for more. You're tuned into Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Happiness grows here. Farm Market. Visit us at Orr's Farm Market, just five miles west of Martinsburg, to pick up all your local fresh fruits and vegetables. With our in-house bakery, fresh fruit slushies, and apple cider donuts, you can't go wrong. Live bluegrass every Saturday from 12 to 5 p.m. And check out all that's local and delicious at Orr's by going to orrsfarmmarket.com or visit our Facebook page. Happiness grows here. Orr's Farm Market. Welcome back. Francis Fannin Field. Martinsburg 58, Bishop Ireton nothing. 5.50 to go in the third quarter, and the clock winding down for the mercy rule as Brett Terwilliger to kick off for the Bulldogs, who have six guys on the kickoff team on the near side of the field and four more to the far side as Terwilliger will spot the ball at the 40-yard line on the kicking tee on that far side hash mark. And let's all cross our fingers that the wind does not knock it down on him again. 
Terwilliger runs forward to kick it off. And it's a high end over end kick. It'll be caught by Trey Jones at the far side, five yard line. He makes his way out to the 20 before being met by Herring and Harden. Bring up a first down for Bishop Ireton. We do have an update on Shepard. Got a rushing touchdown by Ronnie Brown. Make it 14 to 6. Shepard goes for two. It does not get it, but they are able to close it down to a one-score lead. An interesting going for two, but as you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, er, Haney yeah. did miss a field goal because of the wind. So yes. maybe that's why they're going for two. First and ten, Bishop Ireton, as we look down onto the field, it's Brandon Diggs and that quarterback. But Jones to his right, two receivers to the near side, two more to the far side. And a whistle blows. And let's look to the near side as we have a injured Cardinal who I guess might have been on the field but had to get off the field. But now we're ready to go. Diggs high snap, able to get it. Halfback toss into the hands of Jones, but Fagan was right there waiting for him. Holy uh, Fagan has done it all this third quarter. Absolutely. He's the, been a big-time difference maker already. i got to correct myself. It was actually a passing touchdown to Ronnie Brown on a screen pass. So Tyson Bajant now one passing touchdown away from tying the all-time career Division II record. And there you go. 3.40 to go in this third quarter. Brandon Diggs, shotgun formation with Jones to his right for Bishop Ireton, two receivers to each side of the formation. Diggs gets the snap, immediately hands it off to Jones, who tries to go up the middle, but will gain no yards and be pushed back to bring up third down. It is 58-0 Martinsburg on top of Bishop Ireton in your third quarter, presented on TV10 by Chris Ross. Real estate group buying or selling a home, call 304-579-7349 or go to callchrisross.com as well as Ollie's VIP Northside, the best local spot to catch sports or hang out with friends. Stop by 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. Ollie's VIP will see you for the game as the snap back to Diggs. Play action pass. Slant intended for Rock. Oh, fall behind him and incomplete. To bring up fourth down for Bishop Ireton deep inside the Cardinals territory and it looks like they will still decide to punt as originally the offense was hanging out out there a little bit longer than expected but trotting back out is Jack Wheeler to punt it and he's going to be standing right on the edge of that goal line and it looks like we'll see Sarad Musgrove who is back from injury back to return this punt for Martinsburg and I hope we get a good punt here because I, I really am excited to see him back on the field and get some special teams looks. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. A snap back, almost over the head of Wheeler. He's able to get it. And this punt will go out into the stands, off a tree and into the hands of, is that Roman Pearson? I think it was. I think it was as well. And we'll see where they say it actually went out of bounds at. And it will be a first and ten Martinsburg looking to the far side through white uniforms of the Bulldogs. They say it went out at the 31-yard line of Bishop Ireton. With eight, and, uh, with eight minutes left in the second quarter, Shepard still down 14-6. to six. Just had an interception by Dante Harrison to get the Rams the ball back. There you go. So it looked bleak and scary start. For Shepard is now hopefully turning around for the better. Back here at Martinsburg, first and ten. Fagan in at quarterback. Trips to the far side, one to the near side. He hands it off to Buskey. Buskey cuts up the middle, bounces off one tackler, breaks through another, out across the 15 before being pushed back. And it will be just shy of a first down, unless they say it was just barely enough. They do. So it's a first and ten Martinsburg by about an inch. 58 nothing Bulldogs on top of Bishop Ireton as the clock. Under a minute now at 35 seconds. Bulldogs break the huddle. It's Coy Fagan in at quarterback. You will have 
three receivers to the near side, one to the far side, with Busky lined up to his right. Megan gets the snap, read option. He's going to run up the middle, lower his shoulder out across the five, and stopped at the three-yard line. That looks like that will be the final play of the third quarter. Before we go to break, just had a big 40-yard touchdown, uh, mostly after the catch by time career division two touchdown record he just worked so there you go traffic. he has two there touchdown he passes he's one Missed away as we've hit the end of the third quarter it's martinsburg 58 bishop Ireton, nothing we're back in 60 seconds what came first the chicken or the egg no matter what you think you can have it either way rock's new bagel croissant and chicken waffle breakfast sandwiches are made fresh every morning Rocks Local Market. Rise and shine. You're gonna be late for work. Good morning, sleepyhead. Have a good one. Rocks new bagel croissant and chicken waffle breakfast sandwiches are made fresh every morning. Rocks Local Market. WV Medicine is pleased to introduce six new providers who've joined our medical staffs at Berkeley Medical Center, Jefferson Medical Center, and University Healthcare Physicians. Dr. Sandeep Kashup, Thoracic Surgery, Nurse Practitioner Dana Price, Interventional Radiology, Dr. Jessica Rood, Family Medicine, Dr. Michael Seam, Orthopedics, Dr. Emron Sheikh, Orthopedics Hand and Wrist, and Dr. Alexander Shin, Emergency Medicine. WVU Medicine, growing to meet the needs of our community. Back for the fourth quarter between Martinsburg and Bishop Ireton as Martinsburg on top 58 to nothing and they have the ball at the four yard line of Bishop Ireton. Fagan in shotgun formation gets the snap from Bass, hands it off to Busky. Busky trying to find a hole up the middle, keeps his feet churning but he's going to be stopped just shy of the end zone and they'll say about two yards shy, so a two-yard gain will bring up second and goal for the Bulldogs. The wind continues to blow in Alexandria, Virginia. The Bulldogs break the huddle, two receivers to each side for Coy Fagan, with Nick Buskey lined up to his left. Fagan sets, gets the snap from Bass. Hands it off to Buskey, and Buskey trips, goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Martinsburg. 11-15 to go in the fourth. It's now Bulldogs 64, Bishop Ireton nothing. That is the most points now Martinsburg has scored in one game all season. Surpassing 63, which they have done, I believe, four times. Yeah, in their five EPAC games, they scored 63 four times and 62 in the other one. On to attempt the extra point is Wesley Navarro. And it sounds like, again, we had another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Martinsburg that will be assessed during the kickoff. As Navarro will attempt the point after with Pearson to hold. Navarro lining up, taking his steps. Snap back and the hold good by Pearson. The kick from Navarro is up and good to make it Martinsburg 65, Bishop Ireton nothing. We'll be back in 60 seconds. You're tuned into Martinsburg Bulldog Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. We're here again three times in the past two days. You're where? At Dull Jewelers. Look. Can Mom hear you? No, she's in a diamond coma. Get her the pendant or I will. Hey, that's my credit card. What? Can't hear you, Dad. You're breaking up. It's going to take more than a crying baby to wake her out of this diamond coma. You're going to need a mega dose of jewelry from Bechtel Jewelers. 
Welcome back. Nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. It's Martinsburg on top of Bishop Ireton, 65 to nothing as we wait for the officials to back up. Martinsburg 15 yards after the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty during the touchdown. So it'll be yeah. Brett Terwilliger on to kick off from the 25-yard line another time today as the return men for Bishop Ireton will make their way forward a little bit as well as it's in Tom Boy and Jones back to return lined up at the 15 yard line instead of the 5 yard line I mean, it's just a really strong performance by the Bulldogs today obviously you know half that first half of 50 points is always something to be proud of just all around Terwilliger sends it deep caught by in Tom Boy at the 15 yard line he's going to try to follow his blockers up the middle but Mott initially gets there, helped from Harden and a few other Bulldogs, and they'll say that Ntomboy was tackled at the 27-yard line, first and 10 Cardinals. Seeing a lot of new faces coming out on defense now, for sure. Eric King out there, he hasn't gotten a lot of defensive snaps today, so he'll, he'll, get, some, he'll get some run. Nick Buskin at linebacker. Jane Kidrick, Kenvon Williams. Brandon Diggs in shotgun formation. Two receivers to each side. Jones to his left. High snap. Fakes the handoff to Jones. Diggs keeps it himself. And will have a first down for Bishop Ireton as Bass was just able to wrap up his feet. A touchdown saving tackle. It was. And it's a first and 10 Bishop Ireton at the 45 yard line for the Cardinals. Yeah, definitely breaking loose there. It was a good job. I mean, from coming from the defensive line to run up and make that tackle. It's, that's been impressive. one bright spot today for Bishop Ireton's the read option. It has really worked. Yeah, Diggs, Diggs has not done a bad job at all coming in for Omar Diallo. But this time, the exchange on the handoff to Jones is dropped, and Martinsburg recovers. Eric King fell on top of it. So Martinsburg gets the ball. At Bishop Ireton's 42-yard line with six and a half to go in this fourth quarter. Your fourth quarter presented to you on TV 10 by Sutton and Janelle, attorney at law, a full-service law firm helping individuals, families, and businesses with all their legal needs. They're at 224 West King Street in Martinsburg. Visit SuttonandJanelle.com and Hagerstown Ford, revolutionizing the car buying experience. They are the car dealership of Shepard Ram quarterback Tyson Bajan. Go to HagerstownFord.com for more. First and ten, Martinsburg. Six minutes left on the clock in this fourth quarter as the Bulldogs on top, 65-0 over Bishop Ireton. Three receivers to the far side, none to the near side for Fagan. Fagan looks at that far side. That's the snap. It's high. He hands it off to Busky. Busky plows through a tackler up the middle before being brought down across the 40 at the 39-yard line, so a gain of four to bring up second down. I was confused there, and my suspicions were uh, confirmed. Bulldogs only had ten players on the field on that play. Still got a four-yard gain out of it. Yeah, here we go. So Rod Musgrove's way counting. things go today. Yep. Yeah, here we go. Running back out. Yep, I saw, what's it, 23. Tyon Jacobs, a freshman, ran off the field when he saw another wide receiver run on, thinking that it was uh, making sure he didn't have 12 on the field. Yep, now we have a wide receiver to this side, and that's Braden Mott. Direct snap. Fagan goes up the middle and will be tackled at the 30-yard line, but we have a flag in an injured Bishop Ireton Cardinal who hopefully it's just a cramp, it looks like, for Nick Chimera. There's going to be a false start. I don't think Tyon Jacobs got set completely before that play started. And that will stop the clock, so let's take a one-minute break and then be back. It's 65-0 Martinsburg. You're tuned in to Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. 
Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. Hi, this is Lauren from Orsini's right here in Martinsburg. Grilling is not just for the boys. We are a platinum Traeger dealer carrying the Pro Series all the way up to the Timberline Series. We have every flavor of wood pellets along with accessories, rubs, sauces, not just Traeger, we carry Utz, Meat Church, Lanes, and Dizzy Pig. We also carry a full line of Yeti products. Orsini's has everything to complete your backyard. Visit us at 360 Hack Wilson Way or at Orsini's.com. Welcome back as we already have a play in action. It was a jet sweep. Dalvin Wheeler, who was pushed way back for a loss, but they'll say his forward progress was at the 49-yard line of the Bulldogs. So that makes it third down and about 17 or 18 yards for Martinsburg. If you're curious right now, Shepard has the ball back, trying to run a two-minute drill before halftime to throw to score again. Down by one. It's 14 to 13 there. It's 65 nothing. Martinsburg over Bishop Ireton here. Third down. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Fagan looks to the near side. Caught by Mossgrove. Wide receiver screen. Tries to break through a tackle, but he only gets to the 50. So a gain of one will bring up fourth down. And we'll see if Martinsburg decides to punt for the first time. As they say, he actually did get to the 49 yard line. So a gain of two but it's still fourth down. Now it looks like the offense will stay out there. Update, Dylan. Tyson Bajan just threw a passing touchdown to Brian Walker to break the career touchdown record for Division II, 149 career touchdown passes. So congratulations to Tyson Bajan and the Shepherd Rams as Tyson... The new NCAA Division II record holder for touchdown passes, passing Jimmy Terwilliger, the head coach currently of East Stroudsburg, who Shepard right now is playing and now on top 19-14. to That's right. As we have a timeout on the field before the delay of game, 2.45 to go in the fourth quarter. It's Martinsburg 65, Bishop Ireton nothing. Next week, hopefully we'll have that Shepard PSAC game. Unless, for some reason, the playoff game for Martinsburg is on Saturday, which we all hope it is not, and that Morgantown, who is most likely the opponent that Martinsburg will be playing, decides to play Friday night so we can have that game yep. and Shepherd's game as, for the first time in program history, Shepherd's in the PSAC championship. That's going to be a big-time game for them, probably against IUP, but there's still uh, Gannon and Slippery Rock in play as well for them. Fourth down for Martinsburg. It keeps the offense out onto the field. It's Fagan. Two receivers to each side and Buskey to his left. High snap, and he's going to just have to keep it himself. And it's going to be a turnover on downs as Fagan could only make it to the 45-yard line. So it'll be a first and ten for the Bishop Ireton Cardinals. Yeah, I mean, we're giving some good reps in for these JV guys. Some freshmen playing their first action on the varsity level. It's a good time, you know, right before playoffs, get your starters some rest. They got some good work in, in the first half. So, all around strong performance. I don't think anyone got seriously hurt in this game today. So, it's a great it's a great sign there. It is as Martinsburg will improve to 8 and 2, but it is Minute 55 left on the clock. Diggs, handoff, and losing the ball and recovered by Xerxes Yancey, who will make his way into the end zone on the near side. Touchdown, Martinsburg, with a minute 40 to go in the fourth. It's now Martinsburg 71, Bishop Ireton nothing as Yancey high-stepped his way into the end zone for the touchdown. And I didn't expect that one. I don't think Yancey did either. But he gets the score. As 
Navarro will come out to attempt the extra point. I mean, everything's gone right for the Bulldogs today. And uh, right there, finally putting 70 up on the board for the first time this year. That's, a, that's, that's an accomplishment to be proud of, for sure. And you do it right before the playoffs. That's true. As we wait for 11 guys on each side to make their way out onto the field. We've hit under a minute to go, so because of uh, just waiting for the kickoff, this extra point will probably be the last thing we see in regulation as Navarro lines up to attempt the PAT. Pearson looks to the center. Kick is up. And through the uprights and good to make it Martinsburg 72, Bishop Byrton nothing. And 30 seconds and winding on the clock, it looks like both teams will just come off the field and meet at midfield as the clock will hit zero to shake hands. And your Martinsburg Bulldogs will improve to 8-2 and two overall on the year with a win today in Alexandria, Virginia. Bishop Ireton falls to 1-9. and nine. Your final score, Martinsburg 72, Bishop Ireton nothing. We'll be back in two minutes for the Palace Lounge post-game show. You're tuned into to WRNR Martinsburg. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be this football season. Join us Fridays for Martinsburg Bulldog games, Saturdays for Shepherd Rams and WVU games, and every Monday, Thursday, and Sunday nights for the NFL Primetime games. We still have steak night every Wednesday, shrimp nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. So come on in and enjoy the Palace Lounge. We're located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. Welcome back to Francis Fannin Field in Alexandria, Virginia. Your final score, Martinsburg 72, Bishop Ireton nothing as we welcome you into the Palace Lounge postgame show brought to you by the Palace Lounge on Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg with a full lunch and dinner menu, with daily specials, and a clean, comfortable atmosphere. Check out the menu on the Palace Lounge Facebook page as Martinsburg improves to 8-2 on the season and will now be the third seed in the playoffs that start next week for Class AAA. And that means they'll take on the 14th seeded Morgantown Mohegans. Dylan, you got the postgame stats brought to you by Bechtel Jewelers, West Virginia's largest Pandora retailer on Route 11 south of Inwood, taking care of you like nobody's business. Yeah, most of this happened in the first half. You had a great day from Ezra Bajan as his brother just minutes ago broke the all-time record for career touchdown passes in Division II. Ezra was 12 of 15 for 302 yards and two touchdowns and one interception. Zion Grantham, six carries for 52 yards, 56 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Coy Fagan was able to get himself a 28-yard touchdown in the second half as a uh, backup as he was in. Jameer Hunter, 17 yards on one catch, a punt return touchdown and two interceptions on defense. Buzz Dover, four catches, 54 yards, 
two touchdowns receiving. Murphy Clement had three catches for 87 yards and threw a 25-yard touchdown on his only pass of the game. And A.J. Harrison got a 57-yard touchdown on his only catch today. All right, let's now send it down to Spencer Dupuy, who is with head coach Britt Sherman. Spencer, take it away. Thanks, Colin. Down to finish out the regular season and uh, second half, and they were able to put some points on the board for you and have some successful drives and have a successful time on defense. Yeah, it's kind of a crystal ball type look. You know, you get to see into the future a little bit with some of those young guys. Uh, Corey Fagan's done a great job for us all year. He's a kid that would be playing – probably for anybody else and uh, he works hard he's a, he's a backup for us right now the JV season's over and uh, has done a great job Nick Buskey same thing uh, those guys up front blocking for him so you know it's it's you know you, you got some depth when Sarad Musgrove's in there you know with one of the JV groups at the end and he's a great player and a starter as well so uh, you know those guys did a great job and uh, you know we're we're geared up and, and ready for the second season Nothing official yet, but you guys look like to have locked up the third seed, most likely going to play Morgan time. That all gets sorted out officially in the morning. Uh, but uh, what, what are your thoughts on if you guys are playing Morgan time? Well, I'm just ready to get to work. I, I'm not worried about the opponent right now. We'll figure all that out tomorrow. Um, we'll be in Parkersburg at 9 a.m., leaving really early. And so, uh, you know, I pray for, for safe travels for us. And just uh, once we figure all that out, we'll get to work, and uh, the kids will get to work. And, and whoever it is, we're, we'll work as hard as we can to – to keep rolling. One final question here about the uh, alum of your program at Shepherd. He breaks the division, or yeah, breaks the division two touchdown record. And Tyson Bajan take those three touchdowns against a team coached by the guy that had the record. Uh, what does that mean, just uh, for your program to have a guy go on to D two and just completely tear it up and dominate? Well, I'm I'm just really proud of Tyson, and, and probably more so that he's a great player is he's just a great person. He's a great great human being. We we're happy that he was part of our program. We're excited for it, it, what he's doing right now, the present, and we're also excited for the future because I think he's going to get drafted, and I think he'll be a pro that uh, will be in the league. All right, just thanks for the time. We'll see you next week. All right, back up to you, Colin. Thank you, Spencer and Coach Sherman. Let's now take a two-minute break and then be back for our awards tonight. Your final score again, 72 nothing Martinsburg over Bishop Ireton. You're tuned in to Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Are you considering selling your home and don't know where to start? Then call Chris Ross and the Milestone Real Estate Group at Keller Williams. A Martinsburg High School graduate, Chris knows the local market and he's proven it as number one real estate team in West Virginia in 2019. Phone Milestone Real Estate Group at Keller Williams at 304-579-7349 or go to callchrisross.com. Let's celebrate your real estate milestone together. Laura. Hey, Laura. What's with the sunglasses? Ouch! The word is spreading. Bechtel Jewelers is home to some dangerously brilliant diamonds. See the difference at Bechtel Jewelers in Inwood. Sunglasses, sunglasses not, not included. included. If you're in an accident, the first thing that you have to do is call 911. You have to get medical care immediately. The next thing you need to do is call us. When you hire us at the Skinner Law Firm, what we do is we are gonna investigate your case, and we're gonna lay out the options that you have, all at no cost to you. We will use all of our resources and all of our experience to get you what you deserve. The Skinner Law Firm, skinnerfirm.com.
and then it was just an incredible play there. Apologize there as we didn't have any audio for a little bit, but it should be back up now as we little power surge for a brief second that kind of took us off during the commercial break, but we should be back and hopefully back on. Apologize. It might be a little bit loud, but we'll try to adjust for the final segment, and let's get the Cody's Body Shop collision of the game brought to you by Cody's Body Shop at 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg. Family owned, offering superior customer service and great pricing for a job done by experienced certified technicians. Phone 304-901-4777 or visit their Facebook page. Jimmy Harden is going to get this one because he had a big hit on the quarterback for the Cardinals here today, really early into the second quarter, and it was like that all game long. The Cardinals, even though they love to run the ball, they really just could not get anything going against this Bulldogs defense. And now your good hands catch of the game brought to you by Kelly Allstate Insurance. For all of your insurance needs, call Gary Kelly at 304-263-4596 or stop by 724 Lakeview Drive in Martinsburg. This one's going to go to A.J. Harrison for his wheel route that he caught and went 57 yards for a touchdown out off of the pass from Ezra Bajan. Great throw by Bajan, and then it was a good job by Harrison in stride to catch that ball and use his speed to get all the way to the end zone. All right, and our last award, the player of the game brought to you by Bodwell Insurance Solutions, a local professional to help you with all of your Medicare needs. Visit BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or call 304-283-0864. I could have given my player of the game two of the three awards because he certainly would have deserved it. It's Jameer Hunter because he could have gotten the sure hands catch of the game for one of his two interceptions that he had on defense to go with the punt return touchdown that he had. He didn't even really do much on offense here today. He only had one catch for 17 yards, but he made a difference in special teams and defense. He is just an absolutely incredible player. Came into this game averaging 25 yards every time he touched the ball this year, and he was, it was no different here today. All right, there you go. That's our awards. Again, the final score, Martinsburg 72, Bishop Ireton nothing next week. The playoffs will begin. Martinsburg will be at home, and I believe against the Morgantown Mohegans most likely for the three seed against the 14 seed. We'll figure out the day and time later on this weekend, so just be checking the WVSSAC website as well as social media for that. But for Nick Verzellini, who you'll hear from shortly with the postgame scoreboard show, as well as Braden Schaffner, Donna Schaffner, Spencer Dupuy, and Dylan Bishop, I'm Colin McLaughlin signing off for Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Until next week, have a great rest of your weekend. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. We're here again three times in the past two days. You're where? At Bill Jewelers. Look. Can Mom hear you? No, she's in a diamond coma. Get her the pendant or I will. Hey, that's my credit card. What? Can't hear you, Dad. You're breaking up. It's going to take more than a crying baby to wake her out of this diamond coma. You're going to need a mega dose of jewelry from Bechtel Jewelers. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be this football season. Join us Fridays for Martinsburg Bulldog games, Saturdays for Shepherd Rams and WVU games, and every Monday, Thursday, and Sunday nights for the NFL primetime games. We still have steak night every Wednesday, shrimp nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. So come on in and enjoy the Palace Lounge. We're located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. When I was in high school, I was a troubled kid. Hannah Geffert took me into her family and treated me like her son. Today, I'm a U.S. Army veteran, a college graduate, and have a successful job. Hannah Geffert doesn't just talk about caring for children, she does it. She did it for me. Vote to keep Hannah Geffert as your state senator. She will take care of you too.
October is Safe Sleep and SIDS Awareness Month. WV Medicine Berkeley Medical Center and Jefferson Medical Center are joining in the effort to promote healthy sleep habits for newborns and raise awareness about sleep-related risks to infants. The Birthing Center Safe to Sleep team at Berkeley Medical Center and Jefferson Medical Center have both earned distinction as gold-certified safe sleep champions by the National Safe Sleep Hospital Certification Program. If you are a parent of an infant, the first thing you can do to help create a healthy sleep environment is to clear the crib. This is Eric at Hagerstown Ford. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hagerstown Ford, it is that convenient. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a newer used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hagerstown Ford will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it, no questions asked. Why waste your time at a car dealership playing the dumb back and forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want and get your new ride delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. If you're in an accident, the first thing that you have to do is call 911. You have to get medical care immediately. The next thing you need to do is call us. When you hire us at the Skinner Law Firm, what we do is we are gonna investigate your case, and we're gonna lay out the options that you have, all at no cost to you. We will use all of our resources and all of our experience to get you what you deserve. The Skinner Law Firm, SkinnerFirm.com. Are you considering selling your home and don't know where to start? Then call Chris Ross and the Milestone Real Estate Group at Keller Williams. A Martinsburg High School graduate, Chris knows the local market and he's proven it as number one real estate team in West Virginia in 2019. Phone Milestone Real Estate Group at Keller Williams at 304-579-7349 or go to callchrisross.com. Let's celebrate your real estate milestone together. Hello, this is Mark Sutton of the Sutton & Janelle Law Firm. The right attorney can make all the difference in your case. That's why you should call Sutton & Janelle. We have been serving clients in West Virginia and Maryland since 1999 in the areas of family law, DUI, criminal defense, and personal injury. Sutton & Janelle works hard to obtain a favorable outcome for you at a reasonable rate with affordable payment options. Sutton & Janelle values your rights and is passionate about your success. Contact us today at suttonandjanelle.com. Welcome into the Extra Point Scoreboard Show. I'm Nick Verzellini. Our scoreboard show is brought to you by Delegate John Hardy for the 97th District. We elect John Hardy for the West Virginia House of Delegates, local businessman, volunteer, and tireless advocate for the Eastern Panhandle. So our final score here tonight, or this afternoon, I should say, uh, Martinsburg cruises to the victory to win 72 to nothing over Bishop Ironton, which means the playoffs will look like this. First of all, number one will be Parkersburg South, followed by number two, Huntington, number three, Martinsburg, number four, Hurricane, and number five, George Washington. The Hedgesville Eagles will travel to Park South. Beckley will travel to Huntington. Morgantown will travel to Martinsburg next week. Uh, so that should be an interesting matchup that we'll have for you either on Friday or Saturday. University will head to Hurricane, and Princeton will head to GW. And then the rest of the schedule, which I knew I made this graphic if you tuned in the pregame show, but I just lost it somehow. But I found it now, and here it is. Cabell Midland will play Bridgeport. Jefferson will travel to Spring Valley, and Wheeling Park will take on Musselman, 
So that is how next week's high school football playoffs will look in terms of other scores that you want to know about today as following this game in about an hour. We'll join the, the pregame show here momentarily. It will be West Virginia Mountaineers football as the Mountaineers travel to Iowa State for a matchup with the Cyclones. Okay, number two, Ohio State. They're on upset alert. Currently trail Northwestern 14-7. to Texas Tech leads number seven, TCU, 17-13. North Carolina over UVA, 24-21. And Tulane leads Tulsa, 24-13 at 3.30. Also on CBS, Tennessee takes on Georgia. That's number one versus number three. Should be a good one there. Other games here today, Alabama, number six team in the nation, takes on number 10, LSU. Number 24, Texas battles number 13, Kansas State. Number four, Clemson heads to Notre Dame to take on an unranked Irish Irish team. Uh, the Marshall Thundering Herd are at, also in action today. Marshall will battle against Old Dominion. And I clicked on CUSA. That's not in the CUSA anymore, but they are former CUSA opponents. It's in the Sun Belt, and over there in the Sun Belt, that one just started. Uh, it's in the first quarter, 2.31 to go. No score between Marshall and Old Dominion. Of course, if you normally tune in, we do have Shepherd Rams football, but we will not be able to broadcast that for you this afternoon. The Rams are leading at the half, 20-14, to 14, Tyson Bajant throwing three first-half touchdowns to break East Strasburg head coach Jimmy Tewilger's record for the most touchdown passes in NCAA Division II college football with 149. So congratulations to Tyson Bajant. If you want to see that clip, it will be up on our Facebook page here momentarily. And um, that's all I really got here on the Extra Point Scoreboard Show. So thank you for tuning in. Again, your final score here today, Martinsburg 72, Bishop Ironton nothing. Again, next week we will be back with Martinsburg football and hopefully Shepherd Rams football on Saturday. And I say hopefully because I guess we don't know for certain that the Bulldogs will play next Friday night. They might end up with a Saturday game, which then leads to all sorts of craziness. But Shepard is at IUP for the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference Championship game, presuming IUP beats Clarion today, which I could look up real quick and see what the score is of that. But I would presume IUP is in control here. But let's just double-check in case we need to do some investigating. Um, That one starts at 2. I don't have a score yet for it, but... Hey something to look out for. And then uh, Martinsburg cases Morgantown either Friday or Saturday, though, and that's Morgantown's decision. I would presume they choose Friday, but you never know. Um, but again, that does it here for us. Martinsburg gets the win over Bishop Ironton 72 to nothing. Have a good rest of your Saturday afternoon, everyone. When will I be able to retire? And that concludes today's postgame show. Be sure to tune in each week throughout the regular and postseason for more West Virginia high school football. Today's game has been brought to you by Bechtel Jewelers, the Brown Funeral Homes and Cremations, Chris Ross with the Milestone Real Estate Group, the Skinner Law Firm, Hagerstown Ford, the Mansion Ferretti Law Firm, the Myriads Group of Financial Advisors, Orsini's Home Store, Parsons Ford of Martinsburg, Sutton and Janelle Attorneys at Law, CMA Honda of Winchester, and WVU Medicine. For the best in high school, college, and NFL coverage, 
all season long. Keep it tuned in to Talk Radio 